Okay. Yo, what's up, Dirk? What's up, Soft Puff? Call me a bozo. No trainer, you are a bozo. What's up, Rafal? Hello, Atomi. Gail, Monty, Pirate King Wings, Death Gazer, football fan. What's up, everybody? Hello. Yo, what's up, kids? You were there, the collector? Let's go, dude. You have fun? Yeah, we are late tonight. I uh, I uh, had to get the uh, Drampa content out first. I had to get the uh, Drampa content out first. Open your gift. I got you, bro. Yo, we got a lot of people in here. A Tommy, the collector, graphics, Kelcav, J Hood. Yang Su, Chris, Phoenix, Akash. But yeah, I will open your gift right now. Yo, what's up, Dubs? Drampa D's trainer, please. Yo, Atami, I uh, don't have... Uh, we've already interacted today, so I will send you a gift. I'll send you a gift. Yo, we're back, chat. Hello. What happened in yesterday's stream? Did your laptop blow up? The laptop was struggling for a little bit, but it figured it out. It figured it out. Also, I restarted it before this stream, so we're not going to have any issues. I promise. But we got day two usage. Look who has arrived, chat. Look who has arrived. Zygarde, we are so back. Congratulations, Chris, on this 50% Zygarde. But, in usage, it's not Zygarde. It's Annihilate. It's Annihilate. 43.8% usage. Team Crash and you- Oh no! That's not good. Ape got you 2650. Good stuff, man. Look at that. Number three in usage. Monkey Gaming, baby. Monkey Gaming, let's go. Which Pokemon is behind my head? That's a Yveltal. I'm very excited for this. Also, chat, do y'all remember? Do y'all remember me hyping up Shadow Whiskash in a video being like, Shadow Whiskash is good. Look at it, man. Look at it. Shadow Whiskash. Shadow Whiskash. Number eight in usage. Dugong up here, too. And Shadow Gligar. Shadow Gligar is simply just the best mon in the show six meta. Dude, Shadow Cash is wicked. Yeah, J-Hood, I do have a P.O. box. I believe it's saved as a pin in general. So we got Awesome running Shadow Dinair, a Polyrath. Oh, uh, let me go back to usage. Yeah, it's uh, Azu down here. It's Azu down here. All right, so we got Awesome BV versus Mason, Shadow Dinair, Polyrath, Shadow Gligar, Skeleturge, Licky, Chargebug. And let's take a look at Mason's team. <laughs> Chess. <laughs> Mason, Shadow Gligar, Normal Whiskash, Dugong, Licky, Skarm, and Chargebug. So a rare No Annihilate video. Wild Charge Blissey video? Absolutely not, Trainer. That Pokemon looks so unfun to run. If it's a Shadow Gligar, I believe it does. Or it's very close. Yo, Licky into Polly. Good lead here for Awesome. We're going to see the save switch into the Gligar. Sends in the Lickitung. This is a matchup that favors the Lickitung. But with the energy advantage here, Gligar can flip this. He's thinking about it. Shadow Kyogre. I would do a Shadow Kyogre one before I did a, before I did a uh, Wild Church Blissey video. He lands the dig, and suddenly this is flippable for Mason. Yeah, this is actually suddenly flippable for, for Mason now. Builds up to the dig, baiting with the aerial ace. Does he grab the shield from Awesome EV here? He does get the shield from Awesome EV. So yeah, this is just very good positioning now for Mason. 
Going for the slam. A slam doesn't knock out from this range, though. Like, a slam is definitely survivable. He is going to shield up. Mason continuing to farm. Ooh, charge attack priority, it looked like. If that's charge attack priority, this honestly could get a bit uncomfortable. It is charge attack priority. Because a slam doesn't KO, he needed to commit to a whip. Because I don't think this knocks out. It doesn't. And he gets there. And it's not particularly close either. Yeah, he just gets there. He uh, had to commit to a whip there. He doesn't. Magic Mason flip switch, bro. Shadow Gligar is so good. I'm so happy it's back in Rocket Grunts. This thing is disgusting, bro. And now with switch flipped, I mean, it's Polyrath, but it's now stuck on Chargebug, and his Gligar is going to be on Licky, but it's not going to have the energy head start. Got the rank one Blissey, but like your Hundle. Yo, I'm so stoked about that Hundo LeJonk, man. Yo, what's up, Jai? Does he throw one and transfer it here? He doesn't transfer it. Okay. But now it's Licky and a Gligar, and in the zeros, I mean, he has a two-wing attack head start, but in the zeros, this is not as flippable. Attack with, yeah. I know there are some IV spreads that help, and he goes for the whip here because whip does more. There are some IVs on Shadow Gligar that can help it be slightly better into Licky. I don't know the sauce on that though. I'm not I'm not a knower of that information. But I believe there are some. He's going for an undercharge here onto the Licky because he wants energy. And he's gonna get energy. Mason has the X's, or this will pick up the knockout. And the wrath is just basically dry here. One at best. One at best. So. So he takes it. That was just a completely hard counter game, but Shadow Gligar just flips the mid game because it's absolutely insane. And if we take a look at this, like, what on Awesome EV's team really wants to switch into an energy advantage Gligar? The answer is nothing. So for Mason, he can just keep abusing Shadow Gligar again and again and again because he doesn't have a good response to Gligar up energy. So this is very, very safe for Mason. Got a shiny LeChonk from an egg? Yo, that's good stuff, man. That's good stuff. Also, Awesome and Mason look like they could be, like, brothers or cousins. Gligar on the lead into Licky. Let's take a peek in the back here. Yo, Licky in the back is so good for Mason. Shadow Mammal Swine into a regional win. Uh, what does it beat? And don't say Gligar because it probably loses zeros. Ooh, he just save switches Licky. Awesome doesn't have a good check today. This is really, really well executed by Mason right now. He's saying, you know what? I can get some pressure here with the shadow Gligar and then I can just save switch Licky. You have nothing that wants to switch into a Licky either because he he didn't bring the Polyrath because the Polyrath didn't do a whole lot for him. He benched the Polyrath and now Licky is just so safe. Top five favorite mods. Ooh, that's tough. It's a better IV to go with high, higher attack. I believe there's a couple spreads that can be useful specifically with the Lickitung matchup. For me, I just run what I have, which is a high rank. I think it's like a rank 22. But I know there is some tech. I just don't know the tech off the top of my head, unfortunately. Four or five attack, high HP, stamina. I'm pretty sure that's exactly what I have. Hold on. Oh, I have three 14, 14. Oh, snap, Piplup. My favorite shiny. Ooh, that's a tough one. There's a lot of good ones. I'm a really big fan of Aurora's. The Tortured Poets Department. Oh, that's funny. And yeah. Aggressive pivot Gligar because nothing wants to deal with Gligar. 
Yeah, this is kind of just a masterclass from Mason at this point of just how to use Gligar to its full potential. Well, Drampa, its stats let it down. They 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 gave it a pretty nice move set. They gave it a pretty nice move set. Yo, does he get the bro? Gligar is insane. Gligar is insane. He gets the farm now. Do you still have a shadow throw? Yes, I do. Have a shadow throw. He just gets the farm down, bro. Yeah. Ooh. He threw an alignment thinking he wouldn't live a Volt Switch, but he lives a Volt Switch. Uh, this is the first one, Kurt. This is the first one. But yeah, this is just too much damage. Depends on the legendary. For something like Cresselia and Giratina, you can get away with pretty bad IVs. Oh! You ain't have to do them like that, Mason! No, bro! No, 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 no! You were gonna win that anyway! You were gonna win that anyway! No, bro! Oh, no, man! He was gonna win that. He, he didn't have to do them like that. <laughs> He wins that without the catch, bro. That catch was just to send a message. <laughs> oh, no. That's rough. That's rough, man. Yo, Rise versus Uzoku. I'm excited for this. I'm excited for this. Uzo played really well yesterday, and, and, and we know Rise is a beast. So this should be a good matchup. This should be a good matchup. Uzo played really precise, so I'm excited to see what he can do here. Rise with a definitely more anti-meta team. He is usually known for running very, very meta stuff and running it very well, but he's going anti-meta with Icy Wind, Obama Snow, and Jellicent. And honestly, Talon and Dinair aren't used a lot either, so he's definitely going for an un unorthodox style of team building for this tournament. Uzo running a more traditional team with Skarm, Cash, Licky, Shadow Glide, Charja, and Azu. Yeah. I'm hoping Uzo can. Oh man, what a terrible lead for Uzo here. Uzo. Oh no. We see the save switch. Interesting. He save switches the Gligar. Rise doesn't bring the Obama Snow. Not feeling as confident about his team, so that's wonder if that's the reason. Got you. Rise doesn't bring the Obama Snow. Like, Obama Snow has to go down shields, but Obama Snow does win the twos here. Whereas, I don't think Dragonair wins the twos. Uzo could flip this. Uzo could, could potentially flip this. He is saving the Obama for the cash in the back, but I think, I think Uzo flips this, bro. I think Uzo flips this. Because Gligar up a wing attack or two is just so OP neutrally. Oh, throws on alignment. A rare timing and accuracy from Ryze. Actually, he might not have flipped it if he farmed down. Oh, never mind. He he had it. He would have flipped it regardless. He would have flipped it regardless. Do you see there uh, that he actually took extra DBs there? So that way, whatever comes in gets less farm. Yeah, if if the Gligar's up energy, it can flip twos. And he was, because lock-ons do no damage. He sends in the Reggie, but he's so okay with getting farmed down here. Yeah. It uh, does typically, Ryan, but if the Gligar has an energy advantage there, it can flip it. So this happened earlier today, Varen, but we are watching it at, we are watching it without stalling now. So Focus Blast connects, Obama Snow, Skarm. This is still winnable for Ryze, though. This is still winnable for Ryze. Yo, what's up, Battle Cat person? Welcome in, man. I appreciate you supporting the content, homie. Welcome in. Uh, the Discord is open for everyone, Omar. If you type exclamation point and then Discord, it should pull up a link. Yes, yeah, Skarm, Skarm does win zeros here. But the question will be, can he stall out the clock? Rise needs an undercharge and a farm down to win this game. Like, Rise, Rise will need very precise play to win this game. But he has a win con. He has a win con for sure. He's going for the Brave Bird. The Brave Bird makes it really tough to try and get this undercharge right. Like, this is, like, 
Okay, he he is going for an entire zero bubble here. Oh wait, I think he hit like one bubble there. The blast, oh, it's too much, it's too much. Oh, uh, that's unfortunate. And the clock's up so he can just switch and combo with the mud bomb. Yeah, Ryze, Ryze did what he could there. He uh, knew the win con and he played to it, but that's a near impossible undercharge to, to get correct. Yeah, that is a really, really tough one. That's a really, really tough one. Yeah, the uh, the uh, subject matter expert uh, will just play catch sometimes and it's just wrong, but that's okay. We we forgive them. Yeah, like, Ryze had a win con there, but that is very different from other games. Like, he needed perfect accuracy. It is basically like the chess equivalent of playing a game with perfect accuracy versus 98% accuracy. 98% accuracy, he doesn't win that game. He needs the perfect, perfect undercharge. And he went for it, but he couldn't quite get it. Favorite Pokemon, Shiny Shadow Standler, hashtag Fear the Deer. But that is, that is like, especially like, if there wasn't a debuff from the Brave Bird, he, he could have got the undercharge right. But people, understandably, don't know the undercharges when there's a debuff applied. Ooh, good lead for Ryze here. The same lead for Uzoku, or Uzoku. I'm not quite sure how, how to pronounce it. I might just say Uzo, because that's probably easier to say. But the Jellicent is a really, really good lead for Ryze here, as this is going to put... This is going to put Uzo in a really tough spot right off the bat here. Skarm over farming. Perfect timing here from Uzo, which you really, really like to see. We see the Talon and the Shadow Dinair in the back. It'll be charge attack priority here. Ooh, Ryze doesn't go for it. Instead, he's going to shield, look to over farm quite a lot and then fire off an attack. The question is, can he hex it into surf range or does he have to go? He is gonna go for the surf. So he's saying if this doesn't knock out the hex after will. So gonna be firing off the surf here. The surf is gonna connect, doesn't quite knock out, sends in the Gligar aggressively. Gligar immediately going to be met with the surf. This is tough for Uzo. Uzo is gonna let this go. The surf connects. We now see a switch into the Talon Flame. Uzo farming up energy here. Uzo, oh, he throws on six. Ryze is doing the math in his head. He throws on six. He could have thrown on seven, but he thought the incinerate would KO. Oh, Ryze thought he was a Ryze thought he threw on good timing. If he threw on good timing, he can get there. So Ryze throws. Ryze technically didn't have to throw there, but he assumed that Uzo would have thrown on good timing there. But I think the Wizcash just needs to do too much here for Uzo. I don't I don't see a way where Wizcash sweeps this endgame. Wizcash is an incredibly powerful Pokemon in this format, but it's not the sweeping type. Uzo gets one turn bring in there, so he does miss a mud shot, but realistically, I don't see that impacting the game. He's gonna throw two. He could have done two more mud shots there. But even with that, I just don't see Cash 1v3ing here. He has a catch available, but trying to catch for us a one turn. Bro, Rise is doing the calculations. I like it. I like it. Okay, Rise. I see you. Yeah, do them calculations. Let's go, man. Let's go, man. All right, going to be firing off the body slam here. Go for the mud bomb. So every so typically every bubble does damage. However, once you hit excellent, the bubbles after you see excellent don't do any damage. But every bubble from the start until you hit excellent. For Shadow Glagar RVs, I like both, but try and get the wing attack breakpoint versus Lance. Got you. Oh, and the Simul switch. Yeah, GG's. Rise takes it. He gets the equalizer. Rise gets the equalizer here. Okay. I'm excited to see what they can do game three here. 
I like that. It, it's skipping like the five seconds. He was like, rise, Uzo, rise, Uzo. <laughs> that was that was a kind of funny juxtaposition. All right, let's get these boys logged in. Oh, we got a game. Game number three. And what a tough lead for Rise. He runs ABA week to the Azumarill. And the Azumarill is on the field for Uzo. This is really tough. He goes for the Ice Beam. It's caught onto the Jellicent. So catching the Ice Beam and getting the Hex through there. That's really, really good for Rise. But this is still going to be tough. That's This is a near insurmountable lead for Rise. Sorry, this is a near insurmountable obstacle for Rise and a very strong start for Uzo, but Rise gets a catch. We're now going to see a switch into the Lickitung, which is not a catch as Rise is going for the serve. But so the, the switch timers are desynced here, but this is going to be getting rid of this Azumarill is going to be very, very difficult for Rise. Rise is going to continue to fire off surf after surf in this matchup, applying pressure to the Lickitung. Going for yet another surf. Rise's clock will be up soon. The switch timers are misaligned. Rise can potentially look to try and take advantage of that fact. The clocks are not yet up though. Uzo farming up, going for the power whip, and Rise is going to elect to no shield here. Choosing to let this go. And honestly, do you just send in Talon here? I like the play to send in Talon. As this way, you can get energy on the Talon, which is going to be threatening into that Azumarill. Lickitung going to be firing off the Body Slam. The Body Slam is going to connect. Uzo continuing to farm. Oh, we see the perfectly timed switch by Uzo. He switches into the Azu, goes for the Ice Beam on perfect timing, so there's no sneak by Rise. The Ice Beam connects, but it does not knock out. The Bubble goes through, Talonflame going for the Fly. This will do more damage than any move from the Dragonair, but the No Shield by Uzo. The No Shield, and now suddenly, Dragonair has play here into this Azu. Dragonair continuing to farm, going to be met with the Ice Beam. The Ice Beam is going to be shielded up, and suddenly, Rise, with landing that fly, looks to have turned this game around. The Ice Beam shielded up by the Dragonair. Dragonair nearing 100 energy, going for the Body Slam here. And Body Slam, he's going for an undercharge as well. He doesn't just want the KO, he wants the farm. Rise, going for the farm, gets the farm down, and this energy on the Dragonair. Where does it go? In comes the Gligar. Gligar is going to have to take an Aqua Tail here. Rise out of a near impossible lead. Looks to have completely flipped the game on its head. As he goes for yet another Aqua Tail. Uzo had two shields. Suddenly he's at zero. And this is looking tough. This is looking tough. There is still a Pokemon left alive in the back for Rise. Continuing to farm up here. Uzo going for the Aerial Ace. That Dragonair is incredibly low. Is Uzo able to make it to the back-to-back -back here? We'll have to see. We see the switch into the Lickitung, unable to get the catch. In comes the Talonflame. Uzo going for the Body Slam, but he's no bubbling it. He's no bubbling it. Does it knock out? It does. It doesn't. Gligar gets a wing attack. It all comes down to this. Does the Aqua Tail knock out here? It's Shadow on Shadow. He has the Aerial Ace. Does this knock out? The Aqua Tail into the Gligar does not. But the Dragon Breath after does and Rise advances. What a series there. Oh my. And heartbreak for Uzo who had the Aerial Ace. But the one turn Dragon Breath went first. What a game. What a series there. My goodness. <laughs> what a game. What a game. Just unbelievable. Unbelievable. Next up, we have Onion vs. Lyle. Leaf Tornado Superior, Vigoroth, Annihilate, Altaria, Shadow, Alolan, Sand Slash, and Lantern. Nah, Nick. Uh, uh, that is actually the game working as intended there. XL Terminator? Yo, that's hype, man. Next, yeah. That is a strong contender for a next best of video for sure. That was an insane battle. And Lyle running a very standard team. Licky, Vigo, Shadow Gligar, Cash, Charger, Azu. Oh! 
Look at the lead. Annihilate into the Vigoroth. The save switch into the Charger Bug. In comes Altaria. And oh man. This is very brutal start for Lyle. However, getting the Altaria out does potentially clear the Gligar to sweep in the endgame. Ask them for a good Tentacruel. What am I going to do with the Shadow Nundo? Oh no. Yeah, uh, that was a graphical error, K Butler. Uh, Altaria doesn't learn Skull. There's probably just a graphical error. Yeah, that, that undercharge was wicked, man. That undercharge was wicked. That was good stuff. That was good stuff. Charger versus alt typically favors the alt. Sends in the Vigoroth. Well, Uzo clicks it, but clicking a, a charge attack, it takes one turn for the charge attack to go off. So that's why the uh, DB KO is there. Is, is clicking the charge attack takes one turn and so the one turn of, of db knocks out Ooh, the shadow glygar in the back looking kind of scary for onion as he's going to grab a shield sky attack a good move uh it's not amazing no and then he sends in the superior yeah that's a situation where new mechanic could potentially be nice why is it always great league uh it's the most accessible format it's the most accessible format All right, just gonna fire off Frenzy Plant. This is a tough call because Lyle knows that he has Leaf Tornado. He calls the bait, the Frenzy lands. Oh my. But that's the mind games you can play with Leaf Tornado though. And he just lets this go and wins with Annihilate. That is the mind games you can play with Leaf Tornado is Lyle tried to call Leaf Tornado bait. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, like it's not something they, th they explain in the game. So... It is definitely something that kind of has to be explained by word of mouth because it's not like they have a pop-up mid-game that explains why what happened happened, which would be nice. And he's just rubbing salt in the wound here, shielding, going for the leaf tornado. <laughs> Yo, what's up, Jay? Bro, Onion didn't have to do him like that, but the leaf tornado doesn't debuff. But yeah, Annihilate's here to just be like, no, Vigoroth. Vigoroth. You had your time. You won two regionals. That time is over. That time is over. Yeah. Uh, uh, this was the most people at an NA regional this season. I believe EU has had a larger regional, but for North America, this was the largest one. Because Liverpool, that, that was last weekend, was 192 people, but that was in Europe. So, but yes, Shmidi, uh, uh Leaf Tornado, indeed. Oh, okay. Honestly, not a very polarizing lead either way, as we see the Charger Bug into the Alolan Sand Slash. A uh, new mechanic is not disputable. If you have something like lag, then it it could be disputable. Cloudlander is honestly, I don't think it would be better than Therian. Therian synergizes really well with Sandseer. I don't think adding bulk and reducing attack helps it. Because Night Slash on Infinite, dude, it's so good, JD. It's so good. My calm day was was very, very chill. It was very, very chill. Bought a couple mons, got a couple shinies, just hung out with uh, with the wife mostly. Glyco will get a nerf next season. Honestly, I hope it doesn't. Like, it's very strong, but I think it's okay for Pokemon to be very strong. Like, having strong Pokemon feels really fun to play with. I would rather play with a lot of very strong Mons than a lot of very weak Mons. So, it's possible, but I kind of hope it doesn't. Yo, what's up, King Crisby? Hope you're doing well. And he just goes Gligar. This is, this is playable for Onion. Like, in bringing in the Vigoroth, he gets the alignment he wants because Gligar stays away from the Serp. Yeah, I, I am not expecting it will, Nick. I, I'm not expecting that it will, to be honest. But yeah, landing two slams is really good there. Nice counting by Lyle.
Honestly, I, I haven't looked into it a lot, Josh, but I honestly don't mind the current Great League meta, which is a surprise for me because I am often a complainer about open Great League, but I kind of like it right now. Yo. Oh, no, he can't get the snipe. The aerial ace is going to land. Oh, man, he couldn't get the farm down. He's shaking his head and the aerial ace lands and that's the damage he needs for Ligatung to actually win this. He goes for the Leaf Tornado, but it's not going to save him. That's not going to save him, man. Leaf Tornado. No debuff for Onion. Scald. I wouldn't be surprised to see Scald's debuff chance get reduced. That, that would not surprise me. That's not necessarily a nerf that I even really want. But I think it's one that's going to happen. Because competitively, having 50% debuffs is not an amazing thing for a competitive format. You want it to either be a high likelihood or a small likelihood. Like, the critical hit in the main series is like 6%. It's enough to where it occurs, but it's very infrequent. Kind of like the, 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 the Night Slash boost. Whereas Scald currently is already a really good move, even with no debuffs. And then you give it debuffs and you're like, oh... Okay. <laughs> oh, decisive game number three. We see the fist pop there from Onion. What a lead. The save switch into the charger bug. He's staying in here to go for the leaf tornado. Oh, man. He's staying in. He wants the nail in the coffin here with the Leaf Tornado. The Leaf Tornado still doesn't debuff. Onion Superior clearly needs to return to the factory, bro. It's broken. What What is the crit percentage in the main series then? Uh, Nick, I technically have a Twitter, but I don't really post on it anymore. Like, I haven't posted on it in like six months. So... I have a Discord that 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 a lot of us hang out in, and it's like free to join. It's it it's a good time, but that's really the only place that I'm at. I'm not really on Twitter too much anymore. And by too much, I mean I don't think I've tweeted in six months. <laughs> so uh, I don't I don't recommend it. I don't recommend it. Yeah, I figured out what was up with the ads. If I turn monetization on on the stream, it will show ads, just as a thing. It's not. But what I can do is I can set it to the least amount of possible ads, which is still not an amazing solution, but it's only ads every half hour is the least I can do there. Because basically, ideally, at the end, I want them to be able to clear copyright, so that way they can have ads on it when people watch it back after the fact. But to do that, I have to have monetization on. So I've turned it so there is the bare, bare minimum Got a 0 14 13 Shadow Gligar. Oh, yeah. Having to wait till a frustration event is kind of pain. But yeah, Onion uh, uh should just have this. Onion should just have this. This is a Schmeedy play. <laughs> when in doubt, just Leaf Tornado. Yeah, I do post in the Discord about it. I was on Twitter for a while. But I ended up finding that a lot of, and I don't dislike the platform, but a lot of the time I just found it as a little bit of just an echo chamber of negativity where there'd be something I'd be hype about. And then a lot of people would just be like, bro, this sucks. And I was like, I don't, I don't really feel like, I feel like my day would be better without that negativity. So, yo, Todd same bro i have i have youtube premium it's goaded it's go it's unbelievable it's unbelievable bro it's so good not sponsored i just love youtube premium <laughs> i just love youtube premium now it's being unleashed the rank uh, 53 shadow bar votes let's go dude ah uh, nah i am not gonna do blissey just because it's it just seems like a very unfun pokemon to to run And the nice thing about YouTube Premium is that creators you watch still get paid from it, which is very, very pog. Shadow Shiny Rank 20. Oh, that's an instant build right there. That's an instant build. Next up, we got Dune, man. 
Dune with the Night Slash Annihilate. Hey, chat. Do y'all remember a certain... A certain uh, blonde content creator with with glasses who uh, made a video on a certain Pokemon. Whoa! What do we see here, chat? New meta trend, hello? Shadow Cash, man. Shadow Cash. That's one of the nice things about going to these tournaments is I like, I can talk to some of the top players and get their ideas on things they want to use. And so I was like, yo, Shadow Cash is good. And now we get to look at Shadow Cash cooking. And there's another Shadow Cash. There's another Shadow Cash. Uh, does Drampa cook? The uh, move set is awesome, but its stats let it down. Its stats let it down. So we have two Annihilate Cash teams, but he has Ice Punch. Corefish on Water Gun? Oh no. Yo, game one though. Kind of Shundo Chansey. Yo, let's go. Good stuff. I mean, if it's Shundo, you kind of have to build it, right? <laughs> He's going for the Aerial Ace. We see an immediate no shield. Hey, I appreciate that app. Yeah. Ooh, sends in the Umbreon, going for the Scald. But yeah, that's something that uh, that I looked up is like, in like the, like, it'll show at, at the end of the month, like, you get a certain amount from like premium subscribers who, or like YouTube premium members who watch your stuff, which is hype because that way premium members don't get ads, but the creators they watch still get financially supported, which is super hype. Rank 116, Shadow Empoleon, sheesh, King Crispy. Save some good IVs for the rest of us, trainer. <laughs> King Crispy cooking. Oh my goodness. Umbreon foul play after foul play. Can Dune get a farm down here? I don't think he can. Okay, so he will have to Night Slash. Night Slash, it's barely enough to knock out here. It's barely enough to knock out. He said I'd rather not. <laughs> Oh, no. Go for the Shadow Ball here, bro. This does so much damage. But I honestly like the No Shield because you you, you know that however much it does, uh, a Shadow Scald is doing more. Ooh, gets the Snipe with the Annihilate. Good to see Annihilate. Interesting. He's farming up. Goes for the Mud Bomb. See any win con how he could play out of that unless I just phone blew up. Yeah, that's fair. Uh Shadow Emp is worth getting a good one because if it gets a better fast move, it's going to be absolutely insane. But currently it is like a decent anti-metamon or like a cup mon. But if it gets a new fast move, it could go to like top meta. So it's worth grabbing one and holding on to it. Because if it gets something like Steel Wing or Shadow Claw, both of which is in its learn set in the main series, it could be real good. It could be real good. Yeah, I'm super stoked about Annihilate. Oh, Dune doesn't call the bait. Annihilate makes the Shadow Ball now on charge attack priority. Annihilate makes it. Oh, he miscounted. No, he miscounted. He, 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 he thought Skarm was one off, but it wasn't. The switch is queued into the Gligar. He goes for the Sky Attack now, but oh man, Rockhaven could have just won the game on the spot, but the miscount costs him. And now the Skarm is still alive. In comes the Annihilate. Annihilate trying to counter down the switch into the Whiskash. Oh, is this a tie? I think, I think Dune just said t the word tie. So I, uh, I uh, think this will be a tie. And it's a tie! <laughs> oh, man. It's a tie, bro. Fun fact about yesterday. Dune went 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0. So this is Dune's first non-win. This is Dune's first non-win in this tournament. And it's not even a loss, bro. It's a tie. So a tie is basically treated like a rematch. So it just starts over. Yeah, Dune is, Dune currently, 
in in 2024, Dune is probably the best the the like best competitive battler in the world at this moment. And I say that because Axon hasn't gone to a lot of tournaments. If uh Axon goes to tournaments, he'll be right back in that conversation easily cuz Axon of course is insane. But currently, with the run Dune's been on lately, it's hard to argue against Dune as as the best battler currently right now. It is it, it is real hard to argue against that. And seeing him believe in Annihilate plus Cash is pretty cool. Annihilate plus Shadow Cash. Yo, Shadow Gligar into the Umbreon. Dune is... Yeah, Dune is... Dune is just unbelievable to watch battle. He's so good, man. Oh, that's really interesting. Sending in the Licky here. He just goes Skarm. Oh, he doesn't go Skarm. Yeah, uh, San Antonio was... This was part of the 2024 competitive cycle, yes. It was a part of the 2024 competitive cycle, yes. I'm a little surprised he's not bringing in the Skarm here. But I guess he's just saying I can play for Switch this way. So he is saving the Skarm. I guess Skarm can do well into Umbreon. Yo, are we about to have a battle of Shadow Caches? No, in comes the Umbreon. No shield by Dune. He is happy with, 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 with the word Gligar did. Yo, Gligar landed a charge attack onto an Umbreon and KO'd a whole Lickitung. What is this Pokemon, bro? Yep, and then he just goes Skarm here. Not every weekend, but uh, most weekends, yes. Whether in NA or in, in EU. He thought about switching there, decided against it. Ooh, a rare alignment here from Rockhaven. Trying to go for charge attack priority, but Skarm wins that charge attack priority. I have to imagine, because Umbreon wins charge attack priority over nothing, bro. This is still not sky attack range. You have to bird. Yeah, sky attack, the Umbreon survives. Attack, uh, I only have one, so I end up running a bulk. It's a 3, 14, 14, but it has a small amount of attack. Shadow Cash into Shadow Cash, but Rockhaven is ahead by a turn. Oh, dude, with the Mud Bomb. I like this Mud Bomb, bro, because throwing the Mud Bomb means that he is now caught back up in terms of energy because Rockhaven doesn't get his full sneak that way. That is a really, really good play by Dune Bug. Scald. Do we see the debuff? Flip a coin. We do see the debuff. We do see the debuff. Yeah, that is such a heads up play by Dune. Understanding that Rockhaven gets zero turn there, but Dune gets one. So he throws the mud bomb there. So that way he won't be behind on energy in the mirror. Bro, that's a debuffed Scald. Shadow Cash is absurd. Shadow Cash is absurd, bro. Shadow Cash is absurd. That was a debuff Scald. That mud bomb does infinite damage. He goes for the mud bomb. Rockhaven going for the extra here. Clocks up for Dune. Switches to Skarmory. Skarmory makes the sky attack, and that's a win for Dune. He ends up shielding the mud bomb bait, but it's not going to matter because he made it to the sky attack. Very well executed there by Dune. I like the, the play to go for the mud bomb there, and the choice to stay in with the Gligar into the Licky was a really interesting one, but it paid off very nicely. I mean, if we take a look at Rockhaven's team, Rockhaven doesn't have, like, he, he has his own Skarmory that can check the Gligar, but he has nothing to check the Skarmory for Dune. Oh, we, we got game two, chat. Okay. Annihilate in the Shadow Cache. One of the selling points of Shadow Cache chat is if you land a Scald, you can mud shot down. So that is one of the selling points of Shadow Cache is, is if you land a Scald, I believe you mud shot down and you can take the match up. Goes for the Scald. We see the switch into the Lickitung. And he's going to be firing off the Night Slash. 
Immediate Nose Shield by Rockhaven. This is definitely where you want to take the energy more than anything, as Licky absorbs this no problem. And Annihilate gets the boost! Oh no, Chet! Oh no! Annihilate gets the boost! And this Pokemon is about to go crazy now. Oh my goodness. The Night Slash KOs. And another boost! No way! <laughs> Bro, how do you deal with a quad boost in Annihilate? Bro, this Night Slash might KO. It'll be really close. <laughs> Yo! <laughs> Yo! Nah, bro. Oh, no. That is, that is psychological damage there, bro. Quad boost in Annihilate? You just leave. You just leave. <laughs> Bro, look at the counters. Those are double resisted counters actually doing damage because it's quad boosted. He just said one more boost. You can't get another boost, sir. <laughs> at, at least they're laughing about it. They're having fun. But man, bro. Bro, Rockhaven's ape is half HP from double resisted quad boosted counters. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. <laughs> that is so rough. He won't even see the third, bro. He won't even see the third. That uh, Night Slash Annihilate diff right there. It's really unfortunate for Rockhaven, but that's one of the reasons why you run Night Slash, is there is that chance that, that it can just take over a game. And it did. All right, we got Awesome versus Valor Ash. Yo, what's up, Adrian? This one I watched live, so I know from experience, there is a judging call that is a judging call. Yeah, unfortunately, the, the IVs are, are kept hidden. All right, Shadow Gligar into the Shadow Dragonair. At, at even energy, the Dnair should be able to two-shield through this. If I re remember correctly. Oh, he no-shields the Aerial Ace. This means that uh, he can just farm down now with, with the Gligar. Dnair doesn't make a second Aqua Tail. Night Slash Boost is 12.5%. Hobbies outside of Pogo. Honestly, Pogo takes... Ooh, that's a bit of an interesting one. Like, Pogo consumes so much of my life with it being my job that as of late, to be honest, I haven't been the best with other hobbies. Oh, he tries for the dig catch. Doesn't quite get it, though. Doesn't quite get it, though. That would have been a sick catch, but sadly it was not to be. He is going to shield. I uh I uh, took a rock climbing course in um in a uh, college. That was a lot of fun. I also um I run a mile most mornings on the treadmill, but I don't think that's really a hobby. Uh, now that I'm in the latter half of my 20s, I think that's just called uh, self-preservation. <laughs> I uh, I think that is just self-preservation more than anything. Uh, Cause for uh, all you people who are who are built like me and probably younger. Eventually the uh, the uh, metabolism goes. Eventually the uh, metabolism goes, and then you got to start watching what you eat, and you got to start working out to to actually uh, stay in a decent shape. But yeah, uh, Talon just cleans here. I uh, watch football. My team is very bad, but I watch football. <laughs> Uh, 
Oh yeah, Brent. Yeah, Brendan. If I re remember right, is probably around my age ish, give or take a couple years. Cause I remember, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I think you had to run from a straighty stream, uh, straighty stream one time because your wife was giving birth. So you're probably in and around my age, give or take, plus or minus five years in either direction. So he uh he, he uh can definitely relate. So. He yeah, can definitely relate. Yo, goat. Uh, that was me in college, bro. Enjoy it while it's there. Enjoy it while it's there. Drampa does learn fly. Yes. His move set is pretty cracked. Got you, Brandon. Got you. Got you. Yeah, that is, that is what I figured. That is what I figured. Help. That's fair, Goat. That's fair. Yeah, uh, Dragon Claw Drampa would be kind of fun. Like, Dragon Breath, Dragon Claw Fly. Like, Dragon Breath mainly synergizes with 35 energy moves. Like Dragon Claw, so... Landing the dig here, like landing the the dig in this matchup is so nice for the Gligar. Trampa just wants to have alt stats. True. Uh outrage, yeah. Dragon Pulse is a fairly mediocre move. Your charges energy is gonna be a problem for Valorash here. Hey, happy to hear that, Brandon. Happy to hear that. Like, Charge's energy is going to be an issue. But the thing is, I mean, Valorash is a shield. Incinerate just does so much here, bro. Yeah, Valor... That is really nicely timed, but Valorash should just have this. Valorash uh, should just have this. Oh, he didn't shield! Hello?! I think he thought that he didn't get knocked out there, but that was definitely what he had to shield to win the game. Because if he shields that and gets two more incinerates off, it's just winning. But he didn't shield, so now he loses. Yeah. He uh, definitely needed to shield because Charge is never getting bubbled down. Charge is never getting bubbled down. Charge is never getting bubbled down. Slight inaccuracy on timing there. You want to throw two in the move, but realistically, like, getting this damage off is what matters. Oh, defers the bubble onto the dragon air and makes it to the body slam. That's a... That's a really nice play by Austin there, chat. He threw one and then switched, so the second bubble gets deferred onto the D-Nair, not onto his charger. That's an elite play right there. That's an elite play right there. That's good stuff. I like that. That's some good stuff. Need advice for master? Yo, Nick, uh, you can do that via practice battles. It's something that I learned. It's something that I learned. So you can just like battle a friend. Yo, Shadow Gligar versus Shadow Gligar. Oh no. Oh no. Well, um, in this match, awesome, be, due, uh, due to Valor Ash lagging, is now a turn ahead in a mirror. Like, sorry, a, a full fast move two turns ahead in the mirror. So, that is the game working perfectly. That is the game working perfectly. Yeah. And I'm not going to sugarcoat it because this one I watch live. They don't give a rematch to Valor Ash. They don't give a rematch to, to Valor Ash here. Which is really unfortunate. Because he did clearly lag. I guess the argument is that it's not game impacting. But the only way to know that is to know if Awesome wins charge attack priority. 
If we know Awesome wins charge attack priority, then it's not really game impacting, but... Yeah. My thought process is like, if we know for sure that... Also, this surprises me here. Why is he going for a double fly? Because with Talon, typically you want to do flame charge fly fly for 3 2 2. So this confuses me why he doesn't flame charge right away and then just go into flies. Because that's what, like, what makes Talon flame elite is that, th like, flame charge into two fly pacing for, for the next two flies. But he just goes for the flies. He just goes for the flies here. Wild Charge Blissey Battles? Oh, we are not, no. Like, flies cheaper, but as we see, it it comes down to awesome shielding, and the the boosted incinerates could have knocked out. Yeah. Like, flies cheaper, but you still get 3-2-2 pacing, which is identical to what you would do if, if you triple fly. But the big difference there is the fact that your incinerates are boosted. So to me, I feel like that is a that was kind of the, the loose con for Valor Ash. Was if he boosts right away, I think he just wins the game with Talonflame. What am I announcing again? Um, it's because I joined mid-season, it's unlikely I'll be on more this season, but next season for sure. Next season for sure. Because I was, because normally people are brought on in the start of the season. I was brought on in the middle of the season, which is awesome. But yeah, so just to let y'all know, they review it and they don't give a rematch. So uh, we got Uzo versus Mountain Dugong. This would be a really good match. This would be a really good match, man. This would be a really good match. Okay. Spark, Lantern, into Shadow Gligar. If Gligar gets a successful bait, it helps its case quite a bit. Yeah, like Uzo lost, but he's now in loser side of the bracket, so he is not out. Yeah, he is. He is wicked good at this game, but so is Mountain Dugong, man. Yeah, the... Uh, uh lantern has fallen off a bit just due to the rise of chart of charger bug and whiz cash like it it still has play into charger bug but versus whiz cash oh he catches the dig oh that's a filthy catch by mountain dugong okay oh that's disgusting <laughs> bro that catch was gross it would have been charge attack priority, so he has to throw. What a catch by Mountain Dugong, bro. That's a beautiful catch right there. That's a beautiful catch. Oh, man. That is pure filth. I love it. I love it, bro. That's amazing. That's amazing. I appreciate that, Bastion Knight. Whatever opportunities come to me, I am incredibly excited for them. But yeah, the, the rise of Charger Bug and Whizcash have made it really awkward for Lantern to see success competitively. Like, Mountain Dugong's team is really, really weak to charge a bug. Yes, Tiger. Although, uh, we all have to agree to not tell the Pokemon company, because then they might make him change his name. But as long as no one there knows, he won't have to change his name. So, we're all going to say that it's strictly about a mountain and a Pokemon. Because <laughs> Hot Pocket had to change his name to Out of Pocket. So if anyone asks, it's all about a mountain and it's all about a Pokemon. There are no puns here. There are no puns here. Umbreon is handling his Licky, but Licky had so much energy. Like, it's going to end up with, with a Lantern. Oh, he's going for the last resort here. It does slightly more damage. Jot. Yeah. 
Yeah, Josh unfortunately was uh, made to change his name from Josh Dopes a lot, which is pain to, to, to Josh Dell. All right, he uh, gets a catch onto the lantern. It's what Uzo would have to throw here anyway, but... Uh, nothing's wrong with it, Drew, but it is a copyrighted name, so... The Discord, yeah, it's, uh, exclamation point Discord for the link to join it. But yeah, it's basically just a place where a lot of us who enjoy battling and watch the channel hang out and talk about stuff when, like, I'm not live or I'm not in videos. It's not, like, a requirement to join, but if, if, if people want to hang out with people in the community... That is a place to do it. He has back-to-back -back exes here. So he is going to let this go. All right. Goes for the X scissor, but in doing so, Mountain Dugong doesn't go for charge attack priority. Okay. Throws it. He, he doesn't get the catch. Licky, Licky is really low, but I think it has energy. Yo, what's up, Van Man? Hope you're doing well, homie. Oh, Licky makes a slam, but this isn't slam range. This isn't slam range. Umbreon survives this. Not slam range. And it's the Gligar. What a game. What a game, bro. What a game. Like, both Uzo and Mountain Dugong are such strong competitors, man. I I hope we see both of them at Worlds this year. They are both so good, man. They're both so good. Like, watching both of them battle is a complete delight every time. We'll fast forward through the replay. Oh, what a tough lead for Uzo. He's going to save switch into Licky. Mountain Dugong is triple weak to Licky, though. Goes for the Aerial Ace. Uzo going to let this through. Yeah. They have both had completely surgical play, and it's really fun to watch people who are that good at the game. It's one of the reasons why I like doing these streams so much. It's incredibly enjoyable. Go for the Whip. Battle Dugong in a small lo local tournament here. He's the real deal and a really cool dude. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yo, what's up, Leo? Welcome in, homie. Hope you're having a good weekend. The Icy Wind lands. Broken Uzo flip switch here? Hold on. Uzo's full send in the whip here. It's debuff, but it will knock out. Mountain Dugong calls the bait. It's the power whip and Uzo... From what looked like completely hopeless alignment, basically, unless he flips switch, he flips switch, and now this is looking playable. And he makes the slam as well, bro. Makes the slam as well. Mountain Dugong not bringing the Umbreon, and without it, Licky just so safe into this team. He is Brandon, yes. And now it's charge it into the lantern. This is a tough matchup for the lantern. Just generally. Lantern doesn't usually get outpaced by stuff, but it gets outpaced by charge it. Because it has the 3-2-3-2 three, two, three, two alternating cycles on X Scissor. And for those who may not be familiar with the Mon, X Scissor and Discharge do the exact same damage here, but X Scissor is slightly cheaper. So that's why people go for X Scissor here. Because when both are neutral, the X Scissor is cheaper for, for the same damage. So there's no reason to, to throw the Discharge unless there's the difference in effectiveness. Oh, and the clock's not up for Dugong to be able to catch, which is unfortunate. And Uzo, understanding that, knows he can land this damage. That That's really good awareness of, of the switch clock by Uzo. Goes for the surf. He's thinking about it. Does he let it go? He does. He is just going to try and win this game with the Azumarill. In comes the Azumarill. Does he bait? No, he full sends. Does Uzo try and call the bait? He's thinking about it. 
and he shields, and that's gonna be game over, I believe. Because the Gligar, it has a lot of energy here, but... Bro, look at the calculations, by the way. Look at the calculations. Like, we saw Ryze doing it as well. Like, at this high of a level, this game is all math. And it's so cool to see people who are so good at that split second math and keeping track of an insane amount of numbers in their head. Like, it is just watching absolute brilliance on display there. It's so fun to watch. Like, the... Uh, to play, like, granted, it's a game where you tap your phone, but to play it at the highest level, there's an insane amount of math involved, and it's so, so cool to see. It's just, oh, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. As Uzo gets the equalizer. Very nice energy management on the Azu there. And we get to see a game number three. I'm excited. Oh, we are off to the races. Ooh, tough lead for Mountain Dugong. ABA weak to the Charger Bug. Switches into the Gligar. Answered with the Whizcash. Hold on, this is actually not bad at all for Mountain Dugong. The Skarmory's not there. The Skarmory's not there. So, this is potentially... Oh, he, he's, he's gonna let this go. This is interesting. So he's just saying Lantern Sweep. So he all oh, gets the debuff. So he's just conceding the fact that, that he won't win swap. Let's go for the dig. I mean, if Mountain Dugong really wants to push the issue here, can, I think he can double shield and wing attack down. Oh, no, he can't because he got debuffed. I forgot he got debuffed. I forgot he got debuffed. Dugong uh, flipped this against me with my Whiskash. Dang. So he's just going to let it go. Mud Bomb knocks out. He is just... Oh, man. I mean, I guess Switch doesn't matter because he is ABA weak. So I will stand corrected. Because he's ABA weak, Switch doesn't matter here. What matters more is like shields. But he is ABA weak. So I stand corrected on him making a play for Swap. Because Swap accomplishes nothing. Instead, and he wanted to catch, but he doesn't get it. Because, like, when you're ABA weak, switch advantage, he just goes from a bad matchup to a bad matchup where shield advantage is more important for him here. He goes for the Exorcist right away. This is survivable, but it does, it does a lot of damage. But this is definitely a very big uphill battle for Mountain Dugong. Alright, going for the Moonblast here. Uzo can survive this, so he is going to let this through. Even if he had Future Sight, like, Charger Bug... It's it's known for being very bulky. So able to withstand that damage there. We see the switch into the lantern. The X scissor here helps Uzo. As we see a big sigh of relief there. It, it it definitely helps him because it puts it much closer to power up range. And then yeah, the uh, the shake of the head there from Mountain Dugong. He knows unfortunately this game's probably over. As he was able to dance around Charge Bug as much as he could. But the charge bug lead in game three just proves to be a bit too much. And we also have, yes, so we have Bam Man. We got Drada in here. Yo, we have, we have a lot of homies. Hold on. I don't think we have a mod in chat right now. So let me, let me grab, grab links to the boys here. All right. Bam Man. Twitch account. Drade. And we also had Doms in here earlier too. We got Drade in here. Yo, someone named a mod said, yo, I'm right here. Oh, that that is so funny, bro. That is so funny. Oh, that is actually hilarious. That is actually hilarious. Take uh, for this VOD to go up, uh, hopefully within a day or two. Yo, that is so funny. All right, we got the Dom's link to, cause we have some homies in here. So I will, I will check their links down below.
All right, Lyle versus Jengles. We're cooking. Old regionals like San Antonio getting VODs. Um, I think those VODs are up, if I'm not mistaken. Like, most, most should get VODs. But yeah, Lyle's running a, a tried and tested team. This is the team that I'm pretty sure that he won the previous regional with. And Jengles, a lot of top 16s. Reggie, Skarm, Licky, another Shadow Cash Believer, Shadow Gligar, and Azu. I do coaching, yes. It's not currently open, though. Yeah, Drade, Drade had a, uh, a a rough go on stream versus a charge bug where he was 6 sex weak. Alright, Licky versus Shadow Gligar. Now we've seen, like, if you land a dig as the Gligar, this matchup suddenly becomes playable. And going for the slam. And and that's not too much of an issue here. But as the Licky, having to shield first is really uncomfortable. So we see the no shield there. And we have the dueling normals in the back. Big O and Licky. Yeah, Lyle is incredibly cracked. Yes. The slam does not knock out. Oh, but the one turn lick KOs as he clicks the move. Oh, man. That's brutal. Oh, he banks energy, brings in his own cash. Interesting by Lyle. Interesting by Lyle. You see an electrode? It is something that I've like, when Evan told me that he was running something spicy, that was my initial thought was he had the Sweet Electrode. It ended up being the Shadow Zapdos, but I think Electric is underutilized, but specifically if it's like Zapdos' niche, just like an Electric that beats Gligar is a pretty cool one. Sends in the Licky, but I mean, Vigoroth is just gonna get 8 billion energy here. Like once, once Lyle's clock is up, or once he gets knocked out, either way, to be honest. Vigo is just, just an unholy amount of energy it's about to obtain. Go for the slam here. I mean, Lyle does survive this because he debuffed it. And he can just switch if he wants. Oh, he's gonna, st oh, begs the mud bomb. Sends in Vigo. And yeah, this is just unwinnable for Jengles. Jengles' his name is also misspelled, but that's okay. It's ELS. Yeah. I admire the uh, commitment to the... Um, I admire the commitment to the Vigoroth. But if you go up against an Annihilate team, it's such a risky go of it. Like when Lyle led Vigo into an Annihilate and then just couldn't do anything afterwards. It's so tough. Playing perfectly to charge attack priority. Like being down energy is where Sh Shadow Cash feels uncomfortable. Because this slam does a lot. But the, the damage output on it is really nice. But he just, I mean, he can shield if he wants to. There is no way that he loses this at this point. So he can shield if he wants to. But, I mean, it's not... It's not going to matter either way. Yeah, Jengles is going to know shield. Basically just conceding the game, understanding that he is not going to... He is not going to win it, and he would rather focus his, his energies on game number two here. So Jengles needing a win to stay alive in the tournament. And picking up a real good lead to do so. Azu into cash... This is a matchup where you would rather be the Shadow Cash. Because if it's the non-Shadow Cash, Mud Bomb just doesn't do a lot of damage here. And we see, oh man, double normal in the back. My Shadow Kyogre, I think it gets to like 1490 or something. So, I mean, the IVs aren't great, but it gets to like 1490. So, there have been worse things in the history of life. Another Mud Bomb, another No Shield. Go for the player of making sure to not go to 100 because you don't want to go over cap there. Just firing off the player off. The player off connects. Cash going for yet another mud bomb. 
Skarm is looking really unfun to deal with in the back for Lyle, because it probably gets aligned onto that Licky Tongue. Goes for the Ice Beam here. Ice Beam might leave it in like one bubble range. Oh, the Shield by Lyle. Interesting. Go for another or save it for another potential shot. Oh, that's fair. Yeah. Shadow Ray will be an insane raid attacker. 4248. Oh, no. Yeah, the like Shadow Kyogre is definitely. Oh, does he get the farm now? Oh, he gets the snipe with the Lickitung. But bad news for the Lickitung is Skarmory season, baby. Skarm just gets it low, farms down with Gligar, and this is just winning for jungles. Yeah, like, Shadow Kyogre, like, its attack stat is crazy, but that thing has, like, negative bulk. Negative bulk. Yo, nice, Sagittarius. I haven't run mine yet. I imagine it's fun to run. It's just, you have to pair it with bulk, because that thing is not taking any hits. <laughs> I saw someone run it on their stream, and, like, 10 Dragon Breaths... Or sorry, like 15 Dragon Breaths, I think. Like the time it took to get to a Surf. It was like close to the red health. And I was like, bruh. Accidentally claimed the stack reach. I had to get the second reach far worse. Oh, that's unfortunate. Master League Annihilate been using training. Nice. Yo, Mountain Dugong. You handsome devil. Welcome in, trainer. When will Henry compete? Uh, When they have a regional in the corn. When they have a regional in the corn, I will be there no matter what. I say that, but they had Peoria and I didn't go, and that was not far from me. So <laughs> I say that, but I am yapping. I am yapping, sir. Yeah, Dugong, you uh play so well, man. Like you were like the comp was so weak to charge and you were able to dance around it extremely well. Very, very nicely done, man. Gira Owen Grey League. I think it's interesting. The kind of awkward thing about it is the the one that'll be the real meta shaker is Gira A because of the bulk and the extra coverage. But yeah, I have a local on Tuesday that I could go to, but I don't think competing at one of the big tournaments is in the cards for me. I don't I don't think competing at oh and he gets charge attack priority. There are plenty of cracked battlers who do that. I would rather be the guy in the suit talking about the battles. <laughs> that is where I'm definitely at my happiest. Sneak out a win. And oh, nice catch by Lyle. I mean, it doesn't win him the game, but Lyle's doing what he can here. The unfortunate thing is they don't allow you to save your recordings from off stream. If they... I regret the lantern pick TBH, but but we ball. Hey, bro, you a day two with a lantern, which which at this point should should qualify you for hazard pay, bro. That thing that, that thing has counters everywhere. That thing has counters everywhere, bro. <laughs> oh man. Also, I can't remember when the change happened, but at some point I messaged Daniel to let him know about the name, and then the name was was fixed. I can't remember if it's this matchup or a later matchup, but there was at one point, it goes from Jengles to Jengles. Yo, it was right here. It was right here. Yes, we have, Dez. Yes, we have. Skarman to Azu, so good lead for Jengles here. Upload uh, of the cup today. Yeah, like, if you play in the cups, you, you can keep your recordings. But from, like, if I played, I would want to make content out of it. But the phones that they have you use, they they don't let you keep the recordings. And that would make it really hard to make a video on my run if I don't have the recordings. Correct. The uh, the uh, Z90X man is, is one of the... Um, is is one of the broadcast producers and he is and he is the um he is the uh whatchamacallit he is one of the people who helped bring me on so we are very big fans of of daniel here we are very big fans of daniel 
He is not able to post as much anymore just because he has this other job, but he's done amazing stuff with, with making it a lot better. Well, J Money, I do pretty well on uh, leaderboards, but I, I, I would argue, and Mountain Dew Gong, who has done both, I think can confirm here that there are very different skill sets when it comes to like the show six and Go Battle League. Like Go Battle League, I feel like I have a very, very good handle on because I, I can run interesting stuff and a lot of my stuff relies on surprise factor. Like a a blizzard kirum a steel wing shadow dragonite like the the shadow zapdos team like i i feel like i've kind of got a very good niche going where i feel very good in how i handle and how i can basically at the level that i play at people are which is often if not leaderboards in and around there a lot of people oh what a catch by lyle what a catch by lyle bro Oh, catching on the Azu is gorgeous. But they are very optimized in how they play because they only play against stuff they're expected against. But the thing is, is also this is not over despite that catch somehow. This is somehow, like, especially if this doesn't debuff, this is not over despite that insane catch. And it doesn't debuff! But, so, a lot of my strategy ro revolves around the fact that at very high elo, people are, or even decent elo, people are very optimized in how they play in the meta matchups. So, I run weird stuff that makes them second guess themselves and make mistakes, and I can exploit those mistakes and win. So, it is a, a calculated gamble that does not translate excessively well to show six if that makes sense and yeah they have open team sheets so there's not a surprise factor i think open team sheets is definitely the right way to do it here they go win cmp here so jangles doesn't throw okay his energy is debuffed i believe this doesn't knock out though this aerial ace. Ooh, Lyle shields it. He shields it, and now he's getting digged. And this, I think, will. Like, it's minus one, but it's a shadow dig from a Gligar. It should still KO here pretty comfortably. In comes the cash. He goes Azu. But he needs two mud bombs, and I think he's just too low. I think he's just too low. I think it's just too low. Like, he can't even do good timing. He just has to throw right away. Ah, yeah. Ah, he, uh, he uh, threw the phone there. He he was definitely frustrated. He was definitely frustrated. And I can't blame him. I can't blame him. Yeah. We, uh, we uh, get the handshake and the hug at the end. Yeah. That's definitely unfortunate for Lyle. He's, uh, he... he He's clearly frustrated, but we still get the handshake and the hug at the end, so. You uh, like to see that even when they're frustrated, people are still showing good, good, good sportsmanship, so. Yo, I'm tired, so my uh, stutter's coming out. Uh, he didn't throw the mud bomb because he needed residual energy to make it to a move versus the Gligar. Because if he throws right away, he just gets wing attack down. So his hope had to be that that the Azu wasn't at a move that the Azu wasn't one off a move that he could do two and and the move and then make it to a mud bomb versus the Gligar. So that's why he didn't throw was he needed an over farm. Another Shadow Wiz Cash. But yeah, as I get more tired, my uh, stutter tends to come out more. So and another Shadow Wiz Cash. Shadow is Cash Gaming chat. Oh, looks like he uh, locked in a uh, uh, Skarm Ape and Shadow Cash. Yo, Skarm into Shadow Cash. This is a matchup where Shadow Skull basically two shots Skarmory, so it's a lot more comfortable to be the Shadow. I mean, either way, Brave Bird isn't fun. I don't need to be tired to stutter. My my stutter is something that's gotten a lot better over the years, but when I'm tired, it definitely comes out. Like, people could have watched my videos for a year plus and not known that I had a stutter. Just because I'm recording and I'm usually more awake when I'm recording. But when I'm tired, the stutter definitely comes out more. For sure. 
Ooh, pivot and a licky. Does he actually... Oh, he is going to scald here. He is going to scald. He has two pretty solid options here. Like, he can go into the ape or the skarm. The skarm is obviously the hard counter, but he might save it because there isn't a hard counter to skarm on Rockhaven's team. Oh, okay. So he is going to use the skarm here, which means that we're going to have Annihilate versus Annihilate endgame. It's something similar with uh, Lisps, where well, what, when I talk fast, it comes out. Got you, got you. Build the... Sh yeah, Shadow Cat... Dude, it, it's so good, Mahesh. It's so good. Yeah, having a Shadow Cache, and then what what Jacques says is is pretty decent as well, is, is having a little bit of attack on the cache can be kind of nice. Yeah, just uh, don't don't uh, make me say that word too much, Gobs, or, or people might discover that... I believe it's a sibilant S that I have. Or had. I don't know if I still have it. So Rockhaven is is just going for big energy on the ape. Because if ape gets this farm down here... Also, did he bird to reduce farm? He didn't. He sky attacked. And he can't switch? This gives Rockhaven so much farm, man. That energy is so uncomfortable to deal with. Like, you could send in the cash... But, oh, this is tough. This is tough. Shield's last second. It is the Shadow Ball. But now there is nothing. Oh, he is going for the Mud Bomb. Mud Bomb should just about KO from, from this range. But I think Rockhaven makes, makes the ball here. I think he makes the ball. Oh, for the second time, he miscounted. He also miscounted in an earlier match as well. Where, okay, lives on one, but gets the catch on a Skarmory. So he, uh, he could have charged attack priority there. He is going to mud bomb and then under charge and then bring in the Annihilate. Can Annihilate get the farm down here? Oh, charge attack priority. It's going to be a race. It's going to be a race. Annihilate versus Annihilate. This isn't Night Slash range, though. This, this isn't Night Slash range. It'll put him deep red, but this is the awkward thing about Annihilate. Is there's no fast move pressure here. So it gets him low, but he can't farm down. And he shakes the head. Yeah, he can't farm that down. One nice thing I know about running a lot of Night Slash Ape is I know what does, doesn't knock out. Rockhaven takes it. Did have a slight inaccuracy there where... I mean, I guess he thought Ice Punch would KO, so... But it barely didn't. He was still able to, to get the catch. And then Pocket's Undercharge was just too much of an undercharge. So both parties had, had win cons in that game that they could have executed. But that's the tough thing about competing is Flex Nighttime Clash's team... He's Nighttime Clash's team, but he's running uh, Night Slash instead. Yo, what's up, FJ? But that's the, the, the margin for error in these things. Yo, Annihilate versus Annihilate. But Rockhaven is on Ice Punch instead of Night Slash. Wait, hold on. Oh, uh, where did his win go? He made a very nice catch of a Shadow Ball onto Umbreon. Are they going to put that back? I didn't see a dispute. <laughs> where did his win go, chat? That's a beautiful catch, but I was distracted by where his win went. Ooh, the catch on a Dugong. Nicely done. I imagine it's just a visual error and it'll pop back up later. Shadow Shelgon had play in one of the limited metas, but it doesn't really have any play in open. It's one of those things that it's like definitely worth holding on to. So it was just a graphical error. They added, got you, got you. Hey, there we go. It's back. It's back. Okay. 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 We're good. <laughs> We're good. We're good. All right, continuing to farm up with the Umbreon here. Umbreon making it to the last resort. This does do slightly more damage. It is it is less energy efficient. It is less energy efficient, but it does slightly more damage. So if you can only get to one, th that is definitely the right move to go to. 
Ooh, Sen's in the skarm here. Sen's in the skarm. I see wind. Simul switch. Shadow cash into annihilate. Bait him. He's baiting him. Pockets thinking about it. Calls the bait. Wow. That is that is a really nice call. Ice punches, charge attack priority. This doesn't knock out, but you lose a lot of whiz cash if you let this through. He is gonna let it go. So he's just saying, you know what? I'm I'm only getting to one move and I'm okay with that. Although if he gets a debuff, uh, I don't, oh, this will be tough. This will be tough. The shadow, I believe you want an attack weight on Micah. I was talking with Axon about it when we do a stream the other day and his advice was attack weight. Ooh, he's baiting. He's baiting. Calls the bait. Oh man. But this is, this is, oh, he shields. He uh, second guesses his counts there. Because that was one short. He uh, second guessed his counts. He second guessed his counts there. That is a bit tough. That's a bit tough. Oh, the patience. The patience. He waits the turn. Oh, that was beautiful. Ice punches here. All right. He uh, fires off a move. He doesn't want to take any extra damage. But now pocket's dry. Rockhaven has residual on Skarmory, so he just wins. Uh, Or he lags a bunch and doesn't win. Pocket's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Pocket Pocket is is a good enough battler that bro knows that Rockhaven just got scammed there. Rockhaven had one residual, so he is 14 turns off. Pocket is 16 turns off. But he uh ends up lagging right here. The uh Scarberry lags right here. And then he uh, ends up losing three turns. <laughs> like Look at his face, bro. He uh he uh, knows uh, uh something went wrong. He knows something went wrong. All right, looks like they uh it is gonna be a rematch. Poggies, so let's go. All right, Skarm into Dugong. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. That's too funny. Icy Wind connects. Farming up so much energy with the Skarm here. Going for the Brave Bird. Yeah, FJ, it is it is kind of crazy and, and kind of humbling as well to, to see like the high level that these like people who who play for, for a chance at the World Championship can play at. It's just unbelievable. It's just unbelievable. Yeah, Rockhaven basically should have had the series 2-0. So he uh Pocket does get another chance, as, as Tiger mentioned, just due to the fact that, that the lag occurred. Alright, he is baiting here. Pocket trying to do a soul read. Calls the bait. Calls the bait. Jeez, that's a brutal call. That's a brutal call. Oh, he gets the boost! Oh, no! He gets the boost, chat! Oh, no, man! Yo! Ask, ask what Night Slash can do for you, chat! It boosts! Exactly, uh, Mountain Dugong says, Why would I have to change mine when it's about a Dugong who lives on a mountain? True. Facts. Facts. <laughs> Facts. It's crazy how uh, out of all these languages Mountain Dugong could speak. He uh, chooses to speak in facts. And he can't even get countered down here. 
He gets the catch on Skarm, but... <laughs> Dude, boosted Annihilate. Oh, the undercharge here. He wants farm on his Skarm. Yeah, that's just very comfortable win for Pocket. Very comfortable win for Pocket. He birds to, to limit farm, but it doesn't save him. Dude, Pocket's facial expressions are so funny, man. <laughs> Absolutely hilarious. He's a funny guy, man. He's a funny guy. I was interviewing him in person, and and then he says, Bro, why does your hair look like you uh, stuck your finger into an electrical socket? So my uh, retort back was, I was going for the Annihilate pair. How did I do? And he didn't have a response to that. So he uh he uh he uh had the one liner prepped. He had the one liner prepped, but unfortunately he uh did not have a rebuttal prepped. <laughs> he uh he uh, did not have the rebuttal prepped, unfortunately. So I've gotta say, I feel like I came out okay in that exchange. <laughs> oh man. Bro, I got bro, I am I uh, stream all day with a chat and well I, I don't stream all day but it's either streaming or being in discord all day and and people love to roast so I have to be quick on my feet I have to be quick on my feet man yo decisive game three Umbreon into an Ape. this matchup is actually awkward with with Night Slash this is like one of the few matchups that actually gets provably worse, but very few people run Umbreon. So it's not like in like high high ladder games and like these tournaments, Umbreon is very uncommon. But yeah, like you can just two shot here. Ooh, banking the energy and catching. I like this from, from Pocket. I like this from Pocket. Let's annihilate into Dugong here. Is going for the debuff, okay? Yeah, Todd says it's nice to watch you these guys play at a high level and you know that it's super accessible to get that good. That that's facts. Yo, he gets the farm down. Oh, he lags! Oh, he lags again! No! He didn't get the farm down! He didn't get the farm down. All right, so um, can I just fast forward to when this is a rematch chat? Because this is going to be a rematch, bro. Six counters KO'd there, but his game lagged and then he didn't get the farm down. So uh, do you want to fast forward to when this is a rematch? Because this will be a rematch too. <laughs> All right. Oh, no. It's crazy how it's another rematch. Yeah, Cash, Scald is just such a broken move that it, it outclasses. What a lead for Rockhaven in game number three. We see the save switch into the Skarmory answered by the Annihilate. This does set up good alignment for Rockhaven in the back. Dirk says the internet was, was, very, was very poor today. Yeah. What well, Dito, the uh, the the first one in the Rockhaven versus Pocket that was a rematch. The issue was, is Rockhaven had one residual fast move, so both of them take 16 turns to get to a move. But Rockhaven lagged by three turns, so instead of outpacing by one fast move, he actually got outpaced. So that one was actually like both of these. I agree with the call to rematch because the. The lag provably had an impact on the outcome of the game. Rockhaven just wins either way. This is not enough for a Shadow Ball again. He already shielded one that wasn't enough for a Shadow Ball. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, you said Pocket should have just conceded. I got you. I got you. Sorry. I uh, A tone is difficult to understand over text. I now understand what you were saying. I now understand what you were saying. I got you. In comes the Gligar. Shadow Ball does a lot here. Yeah, playing during a calm day is always a bit rough. 
Shadow Ball. In comes the Dugong. Yo, Mountain Dugong. Trainer, your Dugong has, has clearly left the hill that it was on. <laughs> I still remember when uh, Mountain Dugong was jokingly saying, I will run Dugong at NAIC if it gets a buff, because none of us were expecting a buff. And then it got a buff. And then he was like, oh shit. And then he actually ran it. And the Dugong is actually just insane now. He said, Dugong can sweep this. I didn't see this endgame. It'll be awkward for sure. It'll be awkward for sure. Also, did he not shield the Power Whip? I'm a little surprised he didn't shield the Power Whip. I'm, I'm a little surprised he didn't shield the Power Whip there. Well, he he didn't shield the first power whip. Oh, the catch! Hold on. Hold on. The catch. Let him cook. Oh no, Glagar doubles up. Wait, Annihilate has a shield though. Hold on. Hold on. Wait. Ah, yeah. Because he he has a move on the Dugong, but I think the the Licky's too healthy. Ah, the, ah, the Licky's kind of low. I stand corrected. I stand corrected. This will be close, man. This will be close. This will be close. This will be close. Licky and the Dugong. Licky takes it. Licky takes it. Oh, man. That got closer than I expected in the end. That got closer than I expected in the end. Yo, winner's semis, Magic Mason versus Rise. Rise again with one of the more anti-meta teams this tournament with the Jellicent, the Dragonair, and the Obama Snow. What a best of, yeah. Unintentional best of five right there. And Rise is on Ice Punch, interestingly enough, but he is on Icy Wind on the Obama Snow. I think Icy Wind is just strictly better for show six. Oh, that's a tough lead. We're gonna see the save switch in a D-Nair. Answer with the Dugong. Oh, this is tough, man. This is tough. I mean, Talon can cook him back. Talon can cook him back. Like, charge a licky core? Talon can cook there. Bax does have Icy Wind, yes. Yes. Oh, he, he is not even fighting for swap. Someone's in the jelly. He goes for the drill run. I almost would have liked to see an Icy here into a drill run. Actually, no. Because I I don't think 5 Hex is KO, so he should be able to make... Yeah, he he made the right call going for, for, for drill run what he did. I stand corrected. I stand corrected. Yeah, Rise is just going to go for cap and go for a farm down. He's going for two shield talent, yeah. Oh, man. Two shield talent sends in the Licky. But Rise is gonna flame charge, right? See, this is this is how you talent, bro. This is how you talent. You flame charge, and then you start throwing 80 billion flies while while your incinerates just continue to cook every living thing in the vicinity. Although if he's going for a farm down, I mean the thing is, if you flame charge here, it helps with the farm down, but then it's three to your next move. Instead of if you go for the fly, it's two. So him here, he, he's fully committing to farm. He is fully committing to, I am going to Talon Flame farm everything down with this flame charge because now he's three off instead of being two off. Slight inaccuracy on timing there from Mason. He won't make a third anyway. He lets this go. Which is a bit of a surprise. Uh, 
He has so much energy everywhere. Sends in the charger and the catch. Oh, man. I think that's the backbreaker. That is the backbreaker, bro. He gets the incinerate, though. Hold on. Hold on. He gets the incinerate. He gets the incinerate. Triple surf here. Oh, he doesn't think triple surf does it. Oh, I don't think he lives the volt switch after. That's why. Oh, that's why he didn't live the volt switch after. Oh, man. Rice almost pulled that back, but... And you can see them smiling about it. That was a beautiful catch by, by Mason there. That was a beautiful catch by Mason. Rise did what he could, but that catch by Mason was gorgeous stuff. Oh, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. It's enough to make a grown man cry. Ooh, charge it into the ape. Ape can win ones here, I believe. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that that catch was was pure filth, man. Pure filth. Such such good stuff. Shielding up a discharge. Let's take a peek in the back. Looking a bit a bit tough in the back for Rise, personally. I would rather be Mason in this moment. He's baiting with an ice punch. He shields the bait. Oh, the catch of the discharge onto the Dean Air. I like that. Saving the energy. That's a really nice play by Rice. Well, he sends in the Gly, because Gly is the pacing advantage here. Well, that paced by one turn. Yeah. 850 million more nice throws. Oh, well, okay. Uh, let me do a nice throw then. <laughs> All right, I'm doing a nice throw on a whooper, man. All right, I actually did a great throw. That should count for two. Sends in the Annihilate. Goes for the Ice Punch, but these Wing Attacks do a lot of damage, bro. These Wing Attacks do a lot of damage. Does he just save the shield for Talon, man? But I just... Oh, man. The cash in the back, bro. I'm not seeing a path forward for Ryze in this game. I'm not, I'm not seeing a path forward in this game for Rise. He goes for the flame charge. Yeah, but a boosted fly doesn't KO with normal cash. So this game is done. Well, actually, hold on. He doesn't have a shield. I forgot he had a shield, Chet. I'm tired. Oh, the patience! But yeah, that's game. That's game. That's game, yeah. I thought for a sec maybe there was a chance, but... Nah. If he doesn't get the Scald debuff, double boosted fly would KO. Oh, that's fair. That's fair. I guess that makes sense why my tired brain thought there was a chance. But yeah, the uh, Scald debuff there. Yikes. Yo, who we got next here? Yo, Onion versus Dune? Let's go. Let's go. Onion versus Dune. Ooh, Water Gun Lantern from Onion is interesting. Water Gun Lantern from Onion is interesting. 
Yo, we see that Serp in the back? Yeah, Dune is... Dune always looks so unbothered during these games, which is crazy to me. Ooh, the catch on the alt. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Does he rebank? Oh, he throws one and then goes Skarm. But, but, but this means that for Onion, the Serp doesn't have to face the Skarm, which is, which is very good. But yeah, the uh, caster that was shown was Caleb. Yes. I believe he went for the Brave Bird here just to pick up the knockout. Yep. Goodbye, Cloudbird. Sends in the Lantern. Bobby, Brave Bird hurts, though. Brave Bird hurts Lantern. This, this unironically adds up. Yeah, Onion has the shield, bro. Why weren't you casting? Uh, I was not invited to cast this one. So they uh, have a rotation of casters. But the next time they invite me, I will be there no matter what. In comes the Charger. He's going to shield. If if Serp gets debuffs in the end game and Dune only has one Mon left, then this gets really awkward really fast. He goes for the X Scissor. He shields, I think. Do we see Dune switch here? Yeah. That makes sense. He knows shields. This means Onion's now just going to go straight for Leaf Tornadoes. And I think he only has two counters, so Leaf Tornado will actually outpace here. Oh, boy. Oh boy, who's ready for another uh, Leaf Tornado to decide the game? Yeah, uh, Dune did end up switching up the strategy a little bit. He's saying Leaf Tornado won't KO me, but does it debuff him? It doesn't debuff him! Oh man! Oh man! It doesn't debuff him, the Shadow Ball does so much damage! Dude, Annihilate is just a monster. Gets the farm down, leaves with the Night Slash. <gasps> Wait, the Night Slash knocked it. it. He didn't get the Night Slash. But he gets the X Scissor there. The one water gun picked up the knockout. So the Night Slash was denied because clicking a move takes a turn. But then Dune still takes it. Yo, what's up, Derek? That got close at the end with a, with the one turn water gun neutralizing that night slash. That got closer than I expected. Yeah. It takes serious stones to confidently bring superior discarmer teams. It does. It does. Oh, what a lead for Onion in game two, bro. Alt into Shadow Cash. Yikes. Sends in the Gligar. Onion sends in the Lantern here. Oh, but this sets up Skarmory so well. This sets up Skarmory insanely well in the back. Yeah. Annihilate when is used like properly, which is oftentimes like in these tournaments, like we see people use it so well. It's just unbelievable. Dune lands the dig, so he gets nice damage on the Lantern. Lantern exits with energy here. Shadow Cash, like, this is one situation where, I mean, Lantern isn't used super often, but, like, two serves actually hurt a lot on, on onto the Waste Cash, whereas the regular is, it is, it can take it a lot better, whereas, like, a third surf actually knocks out. All right, go for the surf. And he just gets that farm down. He's going for the Skarm. Brings in the Surf. It's the Skarm. Bro, does he go for Leaf Tornado again? He's going for the Leaf Tornado. Oh, man. 50-50 chat. Flip a coin. I don't think we've seen him get one Leaf Tornado debuff on stream. He finally gets one. He finally gets one onto the Skarmory. But I don't think it's going to save him. To be honest, Skarm up a shield is just too good. I genuinely don't think this is going to save him. 
Yeah, Rose throwing so many of them leaf tornadoes. It was about time. <laughs> it was about time. He has a mud bomb on Cash, but Cash's energy has never been less useful. But ideally, when clocks up, D uh, Dune wants to switch out and just reset the debuff here. Goes for the sky attack. He's going to shield just to preserve HP because he knows that the Serp can't touch him. He would love to switch out and does. Makes it to the skull and now he's reset the debuff so his energy is hyper useful again. No debuff from the cash. Oh, he catches. He catches the sky attack here. Yeah, King Crispy, uh, I do remember that. And then it got Steel Wing. <laughs> He's going for Frenzy, but Frenzy does no damage. But I guess he is just going to try and go for a farm down. Well, does Alt have a move? If Alt has a move here, he wins. <gasps> it's short! I thought he had a move! I thought he had a move, but he doesn't have a move! Oh! <laughs> Charged attack priority! I thought Alt left with a move, but it was just short, and Dune takes it! And Dune is moving to winner's finals, man. He, yeah, same Atrian, yeah, I thought he had a move too! Oh, by the way, chat, uh, Dune is still at this point in the tournament. Bro, I don't even know how many how many games this is without a loss consecutively, but a genuinely unfathomable number. The group stage. All right, Dune went 8-0 day one. So Dune is now 12 wins, zero losses, and a tie. It ends the same if he doesn't pivot because Dune had two sky attacks. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. So so far, he's 12 wins, zero losses, and a tie today. Well, not well. It, in this tournament. Not just today. Yo, Uzover's awesome. Okay. More Uzo gaming. You love to see it, man. You love to see it. I believe this is... Oh, L Licky versus Licky. We don't love to see this. Ew. Gross. Disgusting. Licky. Body slam. Body slam. Body slam. Body slam. Body slam. We hate... Okay. We uh, hate seeing this. We hate seeing this. Yo, what's up, EX Meta? Welcome in, trainer. Wait, I looked away. How did one lick? Oh, no. So Awesome EV ended up over farming, playing to charge attack priority, and then he got knocked out. I think he was expecting to, to live that. So Awesome EV with a pretty big misplay in the beginning, unfortunately, and that's just going to cost him the game. Because now he, uh, he uh, just gets fully comped. Yeah, he uh, had the back-to-back, -back, but over farmed too much. I think he was expecting to win charge attack priority, but just uh, an inaccuracy there, and yeah, it's just it's just too much. <laughs> Uzo, they're like, oh, okay, he threw a move that works for me. Hey, Brian, it'll be back before you know it, homie. Oh, the patience by Uzo. The patience by Uzo. The patience. Again, he he's just very consistent, very precise, and he doesn't make mistakes. And that's really fun to watch. And now he got to emote a little bit for the camera. <laughs> he was like, ooh, okay. Oh, that's too funny. That's too funny, man.
Yo, you're a Zygarde. It's finished tomorrow, Brian. Let's go. I'm up to 92 of 200 cells. So I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Earthquake Landorus? I have in the past, so I do have some videos in my back catalog of Earthquake Landorus, but unfortunately, with Sans here Storm on it now, there isn't really a need for Earthquake, but I do have some videos in my back catalog uh, featuring Earthquake Landorus. But yeah... Very comfortable game one win for Uso there. Unfortunate misplay by Awesome in the beginning. Yo, what's up, Pogo Steve? Welcome in, trainer. Oh, I went too far. Okay. Licky into Gligar. Nice, Brian. That's awesome. Even in a Lando meta, it's such a beast. You just have to pair it with stuff that can beat Lando, and but that's the stuff that beats the primals anyway, so. Let's take a look in the back here. Ooh, we brought the Dirge. He brought the Dirge. Ooh. Sends in the Licky. Sends in the Licky. Yeah, I'm excited for next season as well. I'm also excited after Crown of Champion to go to bed, I'll tell you that. I uh, wanted to get the Drampa content out first, so I ended up doing this a lot later than expected because I forgot Drampa came out today, bro. Honestly, I I forgot Drampa was the thing. Yeah, Lando, Lando with the new move is just unbelievable synergy Ooh, charge stack priority there just going for the aerial ace aerial ace doesn't really threaten a, a farm down or a shield or anything but it, it it does chip damage and that's the goal but this is looking like an as you want a dirge end game and dirge only wins zeros and it's barely well it uh it uh came out like as far as New Zealand goes, and that's where I get my remote raid invites from. So, <laughs> yeah, so for me, it is I'm in the same time zone as you, 10 35. So, I have to remote raid. So, I have some homies. I was gonna say across the pond, but it's <laughs> the uh, Pacific Ocean is so much bigger than the Atlantic Ocean. The, uh, the Atlantic Ocean is a tiny little child compared to the Pacific Ocean. And there we have it, as it went a dirge, and Uzo will advance. I actually have a whole section of my friends list that is that is designated to people from like those early time zones who who can send me those raids. It is aggressively needed. It is aggressively needed. You got a 98 Cosmog dang, that is better than I ever did. Yeah. Sends in the Gligar. He did use a shield. He did use a shield, Adrian. He did use a shield. <laughs> Only one shield, but he used the shield. Got an in-person raids? Nice. That's awesome, man. Good stuff. Good stuff. I am excited to grind the in-person raids in LA, which by the way, chat, LA Sino Tour. I will be there Friday City Day. Uh, Saturday, Rose Bowl day. Yo, congrats, RTG. Welcome in, homie. Hope you're doing well. Would you ever make an Ultra League Power video? Maybe someday, yeah. But Uzo with... Yo, what's up, Randall? Yeah, Uzo with a clean two-shield flex. And Uzo takes it. Yeah, I'm very excited. I'm very excited for the origin forms. Rank 370 Shadow is cash. It should be well, yeah. A little bit of an attack weight is is kind of nice. 
Oh, that's awesome anime. So Rockhaven versus Jengles here. Shadow Cash into Azu. And this right here, Shadow Cash can actually play for Switch in the twos and I think just win it. Channel just get pre-roll ads on streams. I don't know if channel member status affects that. But yeah, so unfortunately for the... I mentioned it at the beginning, but I can mention it again. If I want monetization on... Ooh, that's a nice catch. If I want monetization on for the VOD, I have to just turn monetization on, which means that YouTube just plays ads, which is annoying. I have it set to the least amount of ads possible, though. The United Chiefs game next Sunday? It would be fun. Unfortunately, the NFL would copyright me to a gross extent and they would they would own me for for many years to come so unfortunately so unfortunately i will i will not be shoutcasting the super bowl as the nfl would copyright me and own my firstborn child so we are not going to risk the wrath of of the national football league <laughs> uh Rockhaven has a lot of energy here, but the energy, I mean, it's debuffed, it's into a Reggie, it's really inefficient. But his clock isn't quite up yet. Yeah, the uh, National Football League does not mess around with copyright. Ooh, the pivot? I kind of like it. You stream NFL, you're gonna carry drugs. A actually, Mahesh, yeah. What new Pokemon do I see? Take over the meta at all GBL. Honestly, I've I've enjoyed the meta from this season. And as people like discover it more and figure out what's good and what's not. I don't know any details, no EX. So I work with like for for the casting, I work with the Pokemon Company International. I don't work with Niantic. So I'm not um I'm not, like, a Niantic partner or anything, so I don't have, like, any info on useful Niantic stuff. He only mud bombs here, which is interesting. Yeah, so I am not beholden to Niantic, but I also don't have information from Niantic. So... I am enjoying the fact that Annihilate is good. Oh, tries for the catch on Lickitung. Doesn't get the catch. How late will this go? Probably another hour would, would be my, my guess. But th the important difference between Annihilate and something like Metacham is Annihilate's a fighter that beats other fighters, but it's not as, like, stats-wise. If we take a look at it, it is not as tanky as something like a Medi. Like, a Medi, even if we say standard high rank compared to Annihilate, the Annihilate stat product is 300 less. It is 300 less. Shadow Cash, yeah, like, Shadow Cash is really... Oh, he calls the bait. That's a nice bait call by Jingles. The Chiefs better win has been an unbearable season. I mean, Niners have the, have the better team, but Mahomes is Mahomes, bro. It is real tough to bet against Mahomes. Mountain Dew Gong says, I do think the overwhelming Annihilate performance in day two is quite telling. People have gotten quite comfortable with it and it's not going anywhere. I agree with that, yeah. But at the same time, I like it in that it is, it is less bulky than Metacham. So to me, it feels less impressive than than medi to me it was really hard to play metacham poorly it is very easy to play annihilate poorly and that's something that i like about it that is that is something that i like about it he I didn't throw because he needed two moves uh jengle still had a shield scar me for ultra I'm not a big fan of it in Ultra, personally. Like, it could be an interesting thing for, like, a cup, but an open... Mono flying coverage just, does, just doesn't feel amazing for me. Mountain Dugong with absolute bars. Hold on. I, I'm actually going to pin this right now. I'm going to pin this. 
Eight feels more rewarding when played well. Metacham is more forgiving when played poorly. And I think that is an extremely important distinction where it is super easy to play Metacham. And even if you don't know what you're doing, you will still do well. But you're good, man, Johnny. I, I did the exact same thing earlier, man. I did something absolutely earlier. Yo, Jengles wins charge attack priority in the mirror, which gives him so much control here. The skull, the debuffs. It debuffs. Honestly, a lot of meta stuff is a big threat to Blissey because it just doesn't really... Oh, we see the pivot into the ape. A lot of meta stuff is a big threat to it. He goes for the ice punch on charge attack priority here, just wanting a debuff chance. But yeah, I I feel like that is a a thought that's just worded very coherently. I like that. A lot of Medis this tournament. Medi was nerfed twice, and on top of that, Annihilate is just the new fighter that beats all fighters. So Medi just isn't played anymore, just due to the fact that it is designed obsolescence, basically. Where they had Medicham was king for years. Basically, ever since XL Candy came out, Metacham has been king, and the the game balancers decided it was time for Metacham to go. So they nerfed Psychic. It didn't affect it, so they nerfed it again, and then they turned Polyrath into a god to help Polyrath compete. It still had some play in the Polyrath meta, but now there's Annihilate, which is the new fighter to beat all fighters because instead of a psychic fighter it's a ghost fighter so instead of single resisting counter it double resists counter so it is it is the the new fighter to end all fighters which some people will will say like bro but medi was so good for so long polyrath suffered a bit of an untimely demise a bit before its time but I would rather have a Mon that has a boost chance as the best fighter than a debuffer as the best fighter, personally. This is tough, man. He saves the Skarm, but this, this endgame is not clear. This endgame is not clear. He goes for the Skull. I mean, Shadow Skull does a lot here, though. Bro, look at the damage! Look at the damage! That's that Shadow Whiskash difference, bro! That's that Shadow Whiskash difference! Yo, Rock Haven's here. What's up, dude? Dude, we. Yo, chat. Everyone say hello to Rock Haven in chat, man. Big congrats, dude. Beastly performance so far. Beastly performance so far, dude. It is hype to have so many competitors coming through. Avoids the catch, too. And a really nice over farm. And a really nice over farm, too. And a really nice over farm. The mud bomb knocks out. He gets the scald. And I think that just knocks out. I think that just knocks out. It does. <laughs> oh, man. Bro. Shadow Cash. So, out of curiosity, Rock Haven. The uh, idea for, for Shadow Cash... Did that come from someone like Axon hyping it up? Because that's where, where I first heard about it. Was Axon running it? And then it was Dune running it on, on his, his stream as well. So I would be very curious to hear a little bit now that the, the tournament's over. The thought process specifically behind the Shadow Cash. Because it seems like it performed very, very well for you. Because it wasn't used a lot in Charlotte, but it was it it made his presence felt in a massive way here. But yeah, that is awesome, man. We have we have two top cut competitors in chat right now with uh, Rock Haven and Mountain Dew gone. Oh, he said because I need to beat Azu, otherwise I have no Azu answer. That's fair in chat. Uh, that, that that's what we were talking about earlier. Like Shadow Cash can actually have play into Azu. Yes. Uh, Shadow Cash is available. I can't remember if it's ground or water grunts. Someone in chat would, would be able to, to let me know. Game number three, chat. Skarmory into Shadow Cash. Shadow Cash can basically two-shot Skarm, which makes it slightly more awkward as the Skarm. 
It, it is the water grunt? Thank you. Okay. So it is the, the female water grunt, bet. Female water grunt. But like, look at this skull damage right here, chat. Like, look at that. That's so much damage, bro. That's so much damage. That is like, it's not a cash, man. It's, it's crazy. They save switch into the Lickitung. Jengles. Interesting that he goes for a Scald here. He could have just banked the energy and brought in Skarm. Gets the debuff. That's tough. That's tough right there. Licky has so much energy, but it's neutralized by bringing into an opposing Licky and it's debuffed. This is a really uncomfortable spot to be in. Jengles did throw his energy though. But Jengles didn't bring in the Skarm. I think Jengles is reading Gligar in the back. It definitely feels like Jengles is reading Gligar, and that's why he he brought Licky in here and he's saving the Skarm. I basically just brought my three best Azu answers here. Got you. That makes sense. Yeah, slam into slam. Clock will be up soon. Oh, just can't switch. Oh, man. That was so close. That was so close. And it does knock out. And notice he doesn't wait his clock there, chat. Which is nice because Jengles is still stuck here for a bit. Jengles is forced to throw a move. So that's a nice play to understand the timers there. That is a nice play to understand the timers and make him use his energy inefficiently. Skarmory into Skarmory. He saves the energy because it's not very useful into Skarmory. He sends in the cash. Uh, Drampa is more of a dex filler for now. Its moveset is honestly pretty solid, but it's held back by its stats. So it could get a move update and get like a cracked moveset in the future. But for now, it's probably just a cut mod at best. So it's worth grabbing one and just stash it. He shields. His jangles does go for the sky attack. It always feels tough because you don't want to risk him just going for like a full send Brave Bird out of nowhere. Oh, very nice over farm here. Charge attack priority. The Scald does knock out. Dude, Shadow Cash. <laughs> oh, man. That two shot on Skarm is so nice. That two shot on Skarm is so nice. Because of his over farm, he outpaces here. He does lose charge attack priority, which is a bit tough. His shadow on shadow, this skull does a lot. He is going to shield last second. Gets the debuff there. The debuff, I think it'll be very, very close to still knocking out. Yeah. He switches into Licky. I'm pretty sure he's a move on the Skarm. He does have a move on the Skarm. But does he have a move on the cash? He birds here to, to limit farm. I don't think he has a move on the cash, does he? Oh, it's CMP. It has to knock out. It comes down to this. The mud bomb has to KO. And it does. It does. Dude, the pop off as well. Oh, man. You love to see that pop-off, bro. You love to see that pop-off. Oh, that's awesome. Dude, Shadow Cash is gross. Yo, we got Zimmy Kid in here as well. Yo. Chat, Zimmy Kid. Hold on. I, uh, hold on. I uh, gotta pull up a, a Dracoviz page real quick. Chat. Zimmy Kid, if y'all remember, we have another top cutter in chat. The, the Sir Fetched Giga Chad chat. Do y'all remember that? The, the Giga Chad runs Sir Fetched in every single tournament. That's Zimmy Kid. I am actually like a little bit star starstruck to have so many people who kicked ass in this regional in chat right now. That is very cool. Welcome in, Zimmy Kid. Welcome in, man. And, and congrats, man. Very, very nice run at Knox. Very nice run at Knox. Yeah, that a mud bomb damage there was so clutch. Again, d uh, day two usage right here. Shadow Gligar, Licky, but look at the ape. Look at the ape, bro. W way cool seeing ape this high. The 
They have had events in the past where Surfet spawned in the wild. Oh, I went too far. Oh, no. I have made a mistake, chat. Hold on. All right, game one. Game one, okay. Shadow A slash into Skarm. It's honestly an uncomfortable matchup for both mons here. Like the the Steel Wings do unreasonable damage to the A slash, but Skarm's moveset is completely walled. We will see the shield because even though it's walled, it's still a Brave Bird and Shadow A slash is not what I would call a tanky mon. So we're gonna see the pivot by Uzo here. Gonna send in the Lickitung. Powder Snow A Slash is a good response to a Lickitung, but with the chip damage from the Steel Wings, this thing's already half HP, bro. It's already half HP here. Yeah, like having Farfetch back in the wild uh, uh, would be kind of nice for sure. Uh, would be kind of nice for sure. Go for slam after slam. Alt being brought in here frees up the cash. That's actually so nice for Uzo now that I'm seeing that. Alt being brought in here, bro. What beats the cash, dude? What beats the cash? Nothing beats the cash. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> Nothing beats the cash now. Oh, my goodness. And something that I really like about, about Zimmy Surfetch chat is Zimmy Surf. Oh, that, that's good to know, Jesus. Thank you. Zimmy Surfetch is best buddy too, bro. It, it actually gives off like OG Pokemon vibes of, of like your Pokemon being your best friend. It's very, very cool stuff. Because it, it isn't best buddied for like a competitive advantage. It It is best buddied like cosmetically and just to show like I love Surfetched. And that is one of the biggest W's possible. <laughs> so. that That is one of the biggest W's possible in my view. I have my uh, only perfect IV Shuckle best buddied for the exact same reason. Because it is my favorite Pokemon. So I will best buddy it. And, and Mountain Dugong's like, boy, do I have something to tell you about Dugong's? <laughs> oh, he doesn't get it. He doesn't get it. He doesn't get it, man. I haven't heard from him in a while, K Butler. But yeah, Linky to bait out the alt to help cash sweep. Some devious work. Some devious work. Yo, this uh, L button. Yo, I, I was not used to how fast that would fast forward. <laughs> oh, all right, Licky into the alt. Yo, that Azu in the back has nowhere to go, bro. Yo, you got the Hundo Shadow Guard. Yo, that's hype, man. That's hype. That's a fun one. That's a fun one. Yeah, he's uh, waiting to evolve Peleus. He's waiting to evolve. But yeah, this just instantly looks borderline over for Onion. Like, Onion just has this one because the, the Azu is so hard countered in the back. Like, Uzo can try and leverage energy, but it's, it's going to be really, really tough to win. I have two of my three Shadow Hundos best buddy. The third one isn't best buddied yet just because I got it during this most recent Shadow event. But I'm working on best buddying it. I actually don't think I did my... I think I only did one buddy heart today. I did the quick treat and that was it. Oh no, Johnny. Sends in the Gly. It's met with the water gun lantern. J to rewind and K to pause. Yo, good to know. Thank you. Only one is best buddy. That's because it's the only one that's really useful. Got you. Chat, I have... Let me... Let me look this up. Let me look this up. I have been so lucky when it comes to Shadow Hundos, bro. I'm looking up how many total shadows I've done. Hold on one second. 
Where is the metal, bro? Okay. I've done 3253. Y'all probably can't see that. I've done 3253 rockets. And I have three shadow hundos. And they're all useful shadow hundos. It is a shadow hundo tyranitar, shadow hundo salamance, and the new one, shadow hundo teddy ursa. Yo, Uzo just blind throwing here, so Onion getting this move off onto the ult is kind of nice. But you can't really bubble down an ult there, so... But yeah, I have gotten unreasonably lucky with getting Shadow Hundos and getting good Shadow Hundos. Oh, that's awesome, Dirk. Pepsi got much love from everyone. Hey, bro, we all have down tournaments, homie. We all have down tournaments. It doesn't make you a scrub. Yeah, like 8, 4, 3, 9, and 2 Hundos definitely feels like more of a... More of a standard rate. I have just been extremely lucky, and the luck will not continue. Shadow Hundo Metagross is a pretty cool one. Shadow Hundo Hitmon. Shadow Teddy from which grunt? Uh, the, the Teddy's in the normal grunt currently. It is in the normal grunt currently. All right. Ooh, Gligar into ult. I believe this is a matchup where Shadow Gly can actually flip this. Don't ask me how or why. That's just what Shadow Gligar does. <laughs> That is, that is just what, what, what Shadow Gligar does, man. It's just what Shadow Gligar does, man. 5185 for you, Arcanine, Gardevoir, A slash, Camerupt. Yo, Gardevoir is a pretty cool one. Um, yes, DJ, that, that, that shouldn't be an issue. As of late, Shadow T-Tar tends more towards SmackDown. Like, I used an Elite TM on mine for SmackDown. He pivots A slash. Oh, man. But that baits out the cash. That baits out the cash. This is what happens when you don't have a counter user chat. Uzo doesn't have a counter user. And now Lantern is just so free in the back. Lantern is just so free in the back. Yeah, this is just over. I don't, I don't see a way out of this. Yeah, that's because your energy just does nothing here. You could bring in the glide, but you just get destroyed by fast moves. This is just over. Yeah, Uzo has has played very well in this tourney. I believe he's played in two tourneys and top cut in both. The most rando hundo. Definitely the uh, LeChonk that I discovered in my box from two days ago. But Onion just farms up to where he gets to a dig and then sends an ult and the game is done. Oh, Onion still had two shields. I thought Onion only had one shield for some reason. He uh, went for the ace though in case he tried to catch. He uh, covered for it. He covered for it. But a bird just doesn't knock out here. Yeah, they're uh, chatting GG's. That's a Varum. Let's go. Good stuff. Yeah, he knows. He'll uh, bird for scientific purposes. But yeah, my most recent hundo was when I was doing my calm day stuff. I discovered that two days ago I caught a hundo LeChonk. 13,000. Dang. You are lapping me there by four times. <laughs> Ooh, Rise vs. Rockhaven. This will be a good series. This will be a good series. Okay. And this is win or go home. This is win or go home, chat. So we have the Obama with Icy Wind, Dean Air, Annihilate with Ice Punch, Reggie, Jelly, and Talon. 
and into the Gligar, Annihilate, Shadow Cash, Licky, Umbreon, and the Skarmory. Right off the bat, take a look at the teams. If Umbreon avoids the Reggie, it's very safe. The team's disappeared. Oh, Gligar, that's a really tough lead here for Rise. Rise save switches the Obama Snow. Gonna stay in here with the Gligar as Gligar outpaces and is able to make the Aerial Ace. Lurkus says, I've Rise Vision. I lurk until I see him show up. Yo, what's up, Dan the Life of Jones? Oh, we've been streaming for about two and a half hours so far. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I said a win or go home. Sorry, I might have uh, strung my words together a little bit too much. <laughs> win or go home. Yes. Nicely timed here. Firing off the slam before the icy wind is reached. And always throw, trying to throw in the middle of the fast attack. So that way you're not giving any free turns. Going for the icy wind. But yeah, this is a matchup where Obama Snow wins all even. So Rockhaven couldn't just switch this in. He had to go for the, the shield with the aerial ace first before he sent it in. Ooh. This? Oh, he's actually going to no shield... And Rise undercharges here. So he was fine with, with, with just letting this go. This is an interesting tactic. Sends in the Annihilate. This is so debuffed. This is so debuffed. The Origin Legendaries, I believe they are separate forms. I could be wrong, though. And Rise switch. So he's able to save the Linky if he needs a catch later on. He does have the Ice Punch. Tries to go for charge attack priority. Rockhaven not going to fall for it. Wow, Dito. That is wild, dude. And then he can overform quite a bit here. Yep, go for the Aerial Ace. Rise is Talon in the back. He's preserved a lot of HP on this Gligar. This is actually going to be annoying for the Talon to try and get rid of. Nicely timed. I think he lives two more Incinerates. It'll be really, really close though. Rise undercharged because he wanted farm on the Annihilate. He wanted farm on the Annihilate. Oh, he did survive it. Rise is forced to throw. Yeah, he he wanted farm on the Annihilate because Annihilate up energy can help outpace the um, Gligar. The origin forms, it'll depend on what, what, what stats they're given, but Umbreon is just so good here. Found a Hundo War Turtle? Nice. Yeah, he's, he's shaking his head where he just doesn't see a way out here. He sends in the Licky and snipes with the Licks too. Drampa, it its moveset is pretty cool, but it's let down by its stats. So it could thrive if they got like a God moveset in the future, but with its just good moveset currently, it's not going to do a whole lot just because its stats let it down. All right, so game one goes to Rock Haven. Rise needing an equalizer to stay alive in the tournament. Oh, that's a replay. Yeah, Valen, late stream, late stream. Oh, Obama into the Gligar, but not panicking. Staying in here and understanding that he outpaces so he can force an early shield from Rise. I like this quite a bit. Like, he's gonna, like, wh whatever he switches into is getting debuffed, which is awkward. He sends in, oh, the Umbreon here. Umbreon met with the Annihilate. This Annihilate is running Ice Punch, which does mean it's better into the Umbreon than if it had Night Slash. Actually, not bad for Glagar. Uh, you and the yeah, the uh, Icy Wind pacing is is kind of rough. Like it's good for a lot of things, but it's kind of rough into Glagar because Glagar's pacing is just elite. Ababa has a ton of energy, which is something to keep in mind later on. Umbreon just going for foul play after foul play. Look at how sick Umbreon is here. Yeah. Umbreon is... Umbreon is... We haven't seen it as much in the competitive scene as of late, but, but with Annihilate being the new best fighter and Polyrath leaving, it makes Umbreon feel better. The Ice Punch connects. Does it get there? Bro, Umbreon! Yo! <laughs> Oh no, Umbreon. I uh, do still offer coaching, Blue Raid guy, yes. It is typically pretty infrequent, but I do still offer coaching.
Licky and a Dinair, but this is just strictly winning for Rockhaven. I think we determined earlier that Rise has has to lick bulk point Dinair, if I'm not mistaken. Which makes this a substantially more difficult farm down for, for the Lickitung. So I think what you do is you just force the final shield wing attack down with Gligar, and that's just winning. That's a rank one Umbreon that is three more HP than your previous one. Hey, well, well, well that paid off, man. That paid off. But if I had to guess here, like Ryze can't shield this because if he does, then Gligar can just wing attack down and take this. Forces him to throw. He just lets this go. And then he just sends in the Gligar and it's just winning. With Kowtow Cleave for King Gambit. Yo, that'd be pretty cool. Yup. In comes the Gligar. He's getting farmed down. Dude, Shadow Gligar is too wicked. Shadow Gligar is too wicked. And he only has one move. He gets the Aerial Ace. Is actually, is it over? I'm nah, it's a Shadow Aerial Ace. If if it doesn't KO, like one wing attack will. Oh, more than one wing attack. I was wrong. Three wing attacks. So Rockhaven, I believe, is now in top four. Also, Rockhaven, I've got to say, the uh, uh, all of the lag against Pocket was completely brutal, and you are a soldier for continuing to stay positive <laughs> when you had back-to-back -back games where just your Skarm decided to not do Steel Wings, and then your Annihilate was like, hey, so what if counter isn't a thing? Whether Ball Obama wins it for Rise, it might have, but there were definitely other games where Icy Wind was really good in neutralizing Lickitung. So it's tough because Obama's kind of in three move syndrome where it really likes Weather Ball, it really likes Icy Wind, and it really likes Energy Ball. Because if you don't have Icy Wind, you're not nearly as consistent into the Lickitung, which is very awkward because a lot of teams have Lickies. That's the Hundo Frigabax? Yo, that's crazy, dude. That's crazy, dude. I wish they would do something like a weekend league. Ooh, okay. We see the Gligar not brought. Okay. It's just the Annihilate bit of the Superior. Leaf Tornado into the Ice Punch. Charge attack priority. This is such a tough call because Frenzy Plant does infinite damage. He is going to shield up the Leaf Tornado. Does Frank get a debuff? <laughs> Bro, I don't know what ancient de uh, deity that uh, Frank upset, but man. <laughs> Bro is not getting debuffs at all. Nice catch of the Frenzy onto the Licky here. Question is, what does Onion switch into? I think he'll bank and switch. He brings an alt. Okay, interesting. Random trade for uh, Frigibags turning into Lucky Hundo. Sheesh. Okay, I see you. That's nice. That's nice. But yeah, Licky can put in some pretty adequate work here. Like, Alt is forced to throw. It's not going to leave with a lot of energy. If he wants, he can leverage it into a lot of Skarm farm. Oh, he's going for it. He's going for... Okay. Give your buddy Frankie T52 a lucky hundo for uh, your backs. Nice. Yeah, the uh, debuff, like, having... Uh, that's why 50% debuffs are not my most favorite addition to a meta ever. You, you'd rather have it be a very high chance or a very low chance, not 50-50. Behind the scenes, well, the, uh, the casting booth is actually behind the stage, so we are not seen by the spectators. Which is kind of nice, because you're just talking into a camera, and that's what I'm used to. Like... Obviously, I've sat here for three hours talking to a camera, so it's something I'm very comfortable with. 
Going for the Leaf Tornado. This is, again, such an awkward call to make. Calls the Leaf Tornado. And another no debuff. <laughs> Bro. Oh, that's too funny. That's too funny. How many Leaf Tornadoes does this man have to throw to get a debuff? And still no debuff. Oh, for three in that one game, bro. Yikes. Yeah, bro, uh, bro, bro accidentally broke a Mayan artifact and is now suffering the wrath. Oh, there's a switch out. Oh, <laughs> Onion ran ABA to Skarm, chat. He ran ABA to Skarm. Oh, that's brutal. That is absolutely brutal, man. Oh, my goodness. That is absolutely brutal. Yikes. But for Rockhaven, he's cooking. Like, Skarm does so well into ult. <laughs> Says, I kind of know that he prefers ABA. Yeah. That's fair, that's fair. And I believe Mountain Dugong asked Rockhaven, um, did you end up considering Dark Pulse at all? Apparently that was something that Mountain Dugong was looking at, but didn't end up running. A Dark Pulse on the Umbreon. Because people do run Dark Pulse on Mandy quite a bit, but we don't really see it on, on Umbreon. Yeah, just body slam after body slam into the Serp. Serp going for the Frenzy plan here. I mean, he just lets it go. He's like, dude, I have Skarmory. Realistically, what are you going to do to this Skarmory? Nothing. So ABA means that one of your Pokemon on the lead and one of your Pokemon in the back share the same weakness. So in this case, Skarmory, like, Onion's line is ABA weak to it because he had a superior lead with an Altaria in the back, and both are, are weak to Skarmory. Whereas... A more traditional ABB. Okay, uh, uh, Shuhan said, I uh, never try one myself, but, but I feel Umbreon needs at least one cheap move. That's fair, that's fair. Yeah, we have an army, but I have a Skarmory. Exactly, Ice Fan, exactly. Tries to call the bait. Yeah, GG's. He takes it. So he now moves to Losers Finals. So I believe next we'll see Grands. Next we should see Grands. Which will be... Mason versus... Dune? I think? Mason versus Dune. Yeah, Mason versus Dune. I'm saying th that I would never cast over and over the shit of casting. Dreams really do come true. Yeah, so we'll show winners. Yo, look at Dune. Bro's always having so much fun. And these are stressful competitions. These are stressful competitions and Bro is just vibing. He is apparently comprised of sunny, positive vibes and perfect gameplay. It's crazy. Okay, great lead for Dune here. Dune still, still has not lost a game in this tournament, by the way. 12-0-1. Dugong into Licky. Very nice lead for the Licky. Very nice lead for the Licky. Go for the whip. If Mason wants to try and play this, he has to shield the first. If you don't shield the first, there's no point in shielding the rest. So he's just going to let it go. Oh, he shielded it. I stand corrected. Bro pressed that at the last possible second. 
But Dune just has uh, Cash Skarm Core in the back. And Cash, like Shadow Cash up a shield, just eats Mason's backline alive. I mean, honestly, Mason's kind of AAA weak to Licky. Because even Shadow Gligar isn't super fun. But the nice thing is Mason has to throw here. Mandy's bulk lies more than its HP. So Umbreon prefers the rapid fire nature. Gotcha. He pivots into cash. That makes sense. The scald, but that is not a shadow cash. So that scald, as we see, does not two shot. And it, I mean, he can just burn here if he wants to. Yeah, that does so much damage. And he can just mud bomb now. Oh, oh man, bro. That right there, that's a rise with Shadow Zard at NAIC play. Dude has some wicked um, Shadow Cash tech. Did y'all see how confidently he played the charge attack priority there? He over farmed to play to charge attack priority. He knows ig exactly that he's going to win CMP. I have only ever seen plays like that with Rise and his Shadow Zard at NAIC and Axon with his Metacham. Though, that is the only time I've seen plays like that. And that's where. Oh, that's a nice Mud Bomb catch. It doesn't win him the game, but that's a nice Mud Bomb catch. Bro is clearly running some 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 devious Shadow Cash IV tech, where he's confident he's gonna be winning CMPs. This Scald is debuffed, so it won't knock out, but he can just go Skarm now. Yeah. But yeah, that was a very confident over farm. You don't do that accidentally. He ices here, doesn't quite KO. Does take a steel wing, which is awkward. And he gets outpaced. Dune still has not lost chat. 13-0-1 on the day. 13-0-1 on the day. He's uh, trying to pull off the uh, Rarjef run. R Rarjef, I believe, went undefeated at a regional where he he just didn't lose a game the entire regional. Oh, here we go. It looks like we went straight from the replay to straight into the game. So they locked in quick. Cash into Licky. Go for the Scald. Instant no shield from Dune. You see the switch into the Dugong. Dugong, I mean, it's still super effective damage, but it's super effective compared to double super effective. Yeah. Continuing to disrespect Licky here is an interesting strategy. Dune is going to let this through. Again, I mean, he just has Licky Shadow Cash Skarm in the back. He sends it the Skarm, which is interesting. My favorite Mondi was currently probably Annihilate. It, it's just so fun. It's just so fun. It feels like a Mon that you can get better at using over time, and that's exciting. Yeah, he uh, can't quite farm down, so he's going to fire this off. If Mason brings in his own Skarm, this gets really uncomfortable for Dune really quickly. And he does just that. Yeah. Because he can get a near insurmountable energy lead, and nothing wants to take Brave Birds. If Dune can pivot, it would be really, really nice to pivot, but he's stuck. He goes for the Brave Bird. Even if he can make a second one here, this is just such a problem. This energy? He's able to make it to another move. 
Another Brave Bird. But this energy for Mason, he switches into the Licky. He is finally able to switch out. Ultra League Annihilate, I was running Ice Punch. Just because there's a lot of Dragonite. And with the increased bulk, I think the pacing is less important. I still think you can run Night Slash very successfully in Ultra, though. Like, honestly, I think both movesets are good. I mean, Shadow Cash has to respect it. As he goes for the bird. Cash versus Cash Gaming. Interesting that he goes for the Mud Bomb here. I think he thought... Yeah, Mason just no shields. I think he thought that Mason had one fewer... Sorry, one more Mud Shot than he did. And that misplay by Dune might cost him. Is 110 attacker above? Got you. He now needs a catch to win this thing. And he doesn't get it. Yeah, I think Mason is going to actually cause Dune to lose a game in this tournament. That is the way this is looking. No debuff. But this is... I would say one of the first real mistakes we've seen from Dune so far. And Mason's able to capitalize. But one tank get, gets above virtually all top 500 rank Lagars. Got you. Tries for the catch. He throws a move, but it it's not going to matter. It's not going to matter. It's not going to matter. He just gets the mud bomb. Dude is human. He's lost a game in this tournament. It's insane that that is the, the level to which, like, did he lose a series? No, he lost a game. <laughs> he lost one singular game. Oh, good lead for Dune, though. This is a best of five. He save switches into the Dugong, answered with the charge of Ugg. Dugong, I mean, I imagine if anyone knows this, Mountain Dugong knows this. Is there some kind of, like, tech with the this matchup that actually allows you to flip it? That's really nice charge tech timing from Dune. Yeah. Like, is there tech that that actually allows you to, to flip this matchup? Or is this matchup just kind of a soft loss? I'm a bit of a surprise that we saw the... Hmm. I mean, he can still just go for two in the move here. Our OGs from Kaiser's NE Battlers. Oh, NEB, yeah. Not really, but you can flip it if you get enough energy. Got you. That's one thing that I really like about the battling community. Oh, the blind pivot cash. Understanding there's nothing, like, with the dude going out of the way, he doesn't have a scald resist. So this is such a safe pivot. That is really nice by Dune. That's really, really nice by Dune. That is so well done. That is so well done. Sends in the Skarm. Just goes for the Scald. And we've seen this two shots, bro. This two shots. Like, s saving the Charger, understanding that it could be the Skarm back there. Really nice. Gets the debuff. This farm is now impossible. He shields. He's like, you know what? Let me let me fish for another debuff. He he really said, I lost one game. Let's not make a habit of that. <laughs> let's not let let's not worry ourselves here. Let's not worry ourselves here. And he sends in the licky. And yeah, it's just the charge it in the back. Yo, it's a Yagnesh. And yeah, that is a game loss for Mason. Yo, King Crispy has a 15 month old. Yo, congratulations, man. And, uh, I am, I am needing um someone to sing me a lullaby chat. I am, I am ready for bed, but we're still at it.
We're still at it. We're not leaving until we crown a champion. Skarman to Annihilate? I would always rather be the Annihilate here. I would always rather be the Annihilate. Because you get the Shadow Ball when they make the first move. He, he's baiting with the Night Slash. Called it by Magic Mason. And he gets the boost! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no, bro. Not like this. Not like this, bro. Not like this. Not like this. He's going for another Night Slash. <laughs> Bro, he did this to Rockhaven too. Nice slash. That'll pick up the KO here easy. And then he just gets to fire up boosted night slashes into this like a tongue. Yeah, Dune's Dune's ape is actually cracked, bro. I mean, Licky at least absorbs this energy here. Another boost! <laughs> bro! Oh man. That is, <laughs> that's brutal. That's absolutely brutal. That's absolutely brutal. Yo, what's up, Andrew? A uh, rise finished in fifth and he ran a pretty, a pretty off the wall team. So very nicely done by him. Bro, that thing took out two Pokemon and a shield by itself. Yeah, like, that's the other thing like night slash we all talk about the pacing but when it comes down to it there's also the there's a one in eight chance that annihilate goes god mode and just ends the game for you on the spot <laughs> never forget that i need to send in licky here and yeah this is all right dune goes to grand dune goes to grand it is like Obstagoon, if it's typing, was way better. And it had way better coverage. And he doesn't get the catch because he's mid, um, mid ice shard. Yeah, there is just no way to win this game. There's just no way to win this game. Like, they are they are laughing about it. They're they're laughing about it. One boost and Eyelid turns into a Terminator. He basically becomes Kratos. <laughs> Accuracy. Trampa is in three star raids, Yagnesh, so you can do a remote raid. Rockhaven says, my opponent's boosted three times in like ten night slashes total. Oh, that's brutal. All right, losers finals chat. So the homie Rockhaven who is in chat is guaranteed top three here with the Umbreon, Annihilate, Shadow Gligar, Shadow Cash, Lickitung, and Skarmory. This means chat, not only are there two Annihilates in top three, but there's two Shadow Wizcash in top three. Dugong said, I scrimmed pocket at his ape double nine size boost against everyone. It was not fun. Oh no. Oh, what a nightmare lead in game number one. S the uh, Skarmory into the Shadow Gligar. That's such a tough lead. We see the switch into the Dugong, answered by the Annihilate. And everything going wrong for Mason in this game number one. Going for the Icy Wind. Very nice timing here. Very nice timing. That's something that, that I've liked is throughout day two, it's been really consistently good, like mechanics and timing from people, which is really nice to see. He's shield. So Mason, I mean, of course, Mason really wants switch. He really needs this Skarmory to not be on his Gligar, but Annihilate is just ruthless here. Does he get this farm down? He uh, didn't want to risk new mechanic, and I can't blame him. I can't blame him. I can't blame him. I can't blame him for throwing there. 
You don't want to risk new mechanic because that's not reviewable. That's not reviewable. That's not reviewable. Skarm, Charger, and the Licky. And this is this is neutral enough. Like the Charger does have a small energy advantage, but this is neutral enough. Yeah, it's neutral enough that Rockhaven should still be in a winning position, I believe. If Mason somehow pulls magic out of a hat, then I will have to eat my words, but I don't I don't see it happening. I don't see it happening. It's new mechanic, also known as damage registration error. Which I don't love the name of, because according to Niantic, that is the intended mechanic. But apparently, <laughs> who knows at this point? Yeah, a, a Sneasler cannot take a hit at all. That thing is so glassy. He's going to let it go. He's going to take Volt Switches, which is uncomfortable to take on the Skarmory, but the Skarm is not far off a move. He's going to bait him. Switches. Goes for Sky Attack here. Mason's doing what he can to try and make this close. I mean, the dig, the dig does quite a bit, but as long as Rockhaven, ooh, this is, this is suddenly uncomfortable. Oh no! Oh no! The miscount. Oh, that hurts. That's tough. That's tough. Yeah. Mason played it well enough to the point where he had to do a perfect over farm and then just a slight miscount there. That's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. I had you eat your words here. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Mason. Mason played it really well there. Mason played it really well there. He, uh, he made it to where a perfect farm had to happen. Yeah, that was tough. That was tough. Evolved it to final form. Oh, no. But yeah, that was insanely well played by, by Mason to fight back from that. All right, Skarm into Cash. Non-Shadow, so a lot less threatening for Rockhaven here. Ape looks really good in the back. I think the thing that we as a human species just have to accept is the fact that Ape beats everything. Oh, I think this Pokemon might beat Ape. Ape disagrees. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you might think you have counters to Annihilate. Annihilate might, <laughs> might disagree. Oh. Gets the debuff here. He's just gonna have bird. I mean, he can just mud bomb here as the Whizcash. Just double up. Oh, he goes past the double up. He's going aggressive with the energy. If he just soaks the energy on Licky and then just aggro swaps Ape, I don't see him losing. Yes. Oh, he saves the energy. Dude, Mason is wicked. Mason is wicked, man. Mason is wicked. Yeah, Andrew, I uh, casted Charlotte and I casted Portland. So the reason why there wasn't watch parties on my channel was because I was there. So yes, I, had, I uh, didn't participate in any of them, but I casted two of them. Yeah, Mason saving that energy, understanding that Rockhaven wanted him to waste it, is a really nice play. And he shields the ball, too. 
He knows that just getting rid of the ape is a priority to help free up Skarm to try and take this game. Oh, playing. Got you. I've done two locals, but I haven't done an actual tournament. My uh, locals are a very small player count. So I get to show up with uh, boss music playing in the background and just... <laughs> Ooh, that steel wing doesn't KO. Ape, Ape holds on here. I'm going off faith. Yup. And he resets the debuff. He resets the debuff. There, uh, there is a local on Tuesday that I can show up to. I don't have a team for it though. I would definitely run Night Slash Annihilate. Yo, maybe I run Annihilate, Dugong, Zapdos, and then just figure out the other three mons from there because Zapdos is a fun mon. I like Zapdos. We like Zapdos. Zapdos gaming is a good time. Basically, just run Annihilate and then a bunch of stuff that beats Azu and Gligar. Yeah. A Dugong's a menace, bro. There's a reason why so many people perform so well with it. Like, that thing's a beast. And he gets the farm down. I have the most booty cheeks IV Zapdos known to man. There has never been a more trash Zapdos than mine. <laughs> oh. Yeah, if I can if I can ladder with that team, I can probably show six with that team. Alright, the equalizer. The equalizer. My Zapdos is 1457 CP. It is it is horrifying stuff. It is horrifying stuff. Oh, I went too far. Oh, Annihilate into Gligar. That's tough. The save switch into the cash. But the thing is, Mason... Mason can't switch here. He's forced to ace just for pacing reasons. It's tempting to shield this, but it's also not a dig. I wouldn't be surprised to see... Does he just go into his own cash here? Oh, he stays in. As Shadow Cash, baiting here is genuinely viable. It's really awkward too, but Shadow Cash is so oppressive. Oh, gets the shield. But, but that's also why baiting might not be the best idea. Because you have the ability to debuff. It's gonna shield here. I did Mo Cheeks, yes. What team would Henry run? Meta or Spice? I mean, probably it's a bunch of meta stuff and then something fun like a Zapdos. It's the debuff on a Mason. But yeah, let's uh let's uh, craft a team while we were while we watch this. Annihilate. Dugong. Shadow Cash. Shadow Zapdos. I need bulk so badly. If the if uh that is the four that I'm running, I need I need bulk on that team. Like I need air. He does make the scald, which is awkward because this does a lot of damage. That uh, that that team is not not bulky. It's not bulky. I would need to add some very bulky stuff on there. Like I mean the the very obvious choice is Licky. Licky's definitely an obvious choice there. I don't think I can do Cresselia because then I'm too weak to charge a bug. Oh, was there a catch there? Hold on, I missed it. Oh, that's such a nice catch. That's such a nice catch. I uh, do not have an Azumarill in my box. That's such a nice catch. Jeez. I would say typically one at most. One at most. I just... Why not... When I first started playing, Azu was the best Pokemon in the meta, so, so I didn't like it. Oh! <laughs> The one HP survive. The one HP survive. I brought a, a Cradilly to a local where I was able to get a win. That was fun. He just, 
this this just is unwinnable for Rockhaven. The the catch by Mason won him the game. Yeah. That was tough, but that was super wet. Like that that catch there was just backbreaking. Oh, uh, we're gaming. Ooh, Annihilate into Dugong. Save switch into the cash. Going for the ice punch first. And gonna save switch into the Umbreon. I like this. Umbreon can pretty easily absorb the energy, no problem. Oh, and there's Gly in the back. Okay. Alignment's looking nice here. Alignment's looking nice here. It happened earlier today, IDK. Uh, we're just watching it now. So far, the, the team that I'm looking at definitely qualifies under the uh, Annihilate and a bunch of Azu and, <laughs> and a bunch of um, Azu and um, whatchamacallit, a bunch of Azu and Gligar counters. Yo, he caught on the Dugong sending in the Annihilate. I mean, he's doing his best to like desync timers and stuff like that. No face paint today? Correct. It took so long to get that face paint off, bro. I am not doing face paint again on stream. Bro, I was like a weird shade of blue for a while. <laughs> I was a weird shade of blue. I don't want to just be perpetually blue. Yeah. In comes Charger. He does actually... Oh, he gets the Shadow Ball. Okay, that's nice. That's nice. That's nice. He shields it up. He has so much energy here. I mean, this is this is not over. Mason has a lot of energy, but I believe so, Rusty. Yes. Are you turning me into Wario Transit? Sends in the cash. Sends in the Umbreon. If he gets a debuff. If he gets a debuff here. This gets uncomfortable. He doesn't want to risk charge attack priority. He's going to shield. If he gets a debuff here. This is, this is genuinely Monka. He gets the debuff. No, he's fine. He's fine. He's fine. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Oh, boy. We're going to game five, chat. We're going to game five. People are uh, throw, th throw a die at each other on the holiday. You're watching die out for weeks. Got you. Game five, chat. Do I just run my own Shadow Gligar because it's an OP Pokemon? If I run my own Shadow Gligar, I'm too weak to opposing Dugong, so. Which sucks because I really like Gligar. Like, Gligar is so good, man. How do I not run Gligar? But I need to not be as weak to Dugong as I am. Something that can beat Dugong would be good. Game number five. Okay. Licky into Dugong.
Good leap for Rockhaven here. Mid, yeah. Even a mid Shadow Gligar still claps. Like, if it doesn't have frustration, it's so good. Lands the move. Very interesting. Yo, that's awesome, Omar. Icy Wind again. Let me farm up here. Sends in Wizcash. He's gonna let it go. He's gonna let it go. That's double super effective damage trainer. In comes the Annihilate. I am very confused. I mean, it was double debuffed, but still. In comes the Scald. The Scald debuff does not occur. He just farms down here. Oh, we can't farm down. I'm glad Rockhaven is more attentive than I. I thought he could farm down, but he could not. Four cycles. Four cycles, people. Four cycles. In comes the Charger. Can he make two Ice Punches here? I don't think he does. Because I think he's at eight, so I think he'll, he'll die with it. Yeah, just like a couple energy short. This is the one situation when Shadow Cash is worse. Like if your opponent has a ton of energy, regular cash can just tank moves for days. Whereas the Shadow Cash, these X Scissors actually genuinely add up. So this is tilting back towards Mason. The switch out into the dugong. Going for the mud bomb. Mason's gonna let it go. Oh man. But this is debuffed, so Mason doesn't shield. Oh, man. Goes for the Mud Bomb. I think Mason doubles up and wins this game, which is astounding. He does! He does! Wow. That actually looked so unwinnable there. That looked so unwinnable. Oh, wait, it does a KO! Oh, he takes it! I thought that KO'd! It didn't! Oh, what a close loss, bro. Still a beastly run by Rockhaven, man. What a beastly run by Rockhaven. That game looked so doomed, so pulling that off is, is pretty cool. That is like the, the one weakness of Shadow Cash is you can't use it as a damage sponge as well as you can with, with the regular. Scarm finding its mark here as it leads. Well, Scarm leading into the Charger Bug. I lost track of my Linky's energy. Got you. It happens, man, dude. Beastly run. Beastly run. Like, third place at the biggest any regional this season is no joke, man. Big congrats. Big congrats. But yeah, so charge into Scarm greatly for Dune. Safe switch cash answered by the Licky. This is never as comfortable as you want it to be as the Licky. I like that we have 374 people in here. Well, sorry, 373 people who are just vibing. And then one guy who's like, shout out, shout out, shout out. No. <laughs> I don't know you. 
you could make videos about punting children across rooms. I don't know if I want to shout that out. Like, look at Cash, bro. He pivots Skarm, sends in the Charger. Yeah, I could, I could get to this man's channel and they could be like, hold on, what was his name? What's up guys, my name is Abhijit. Welcome to my YouTube channel where I teach you the best ways to take infants and dropkick them. All right, so what you're gonna wanna go for here is very carefully hold the infant here. You I definitely wanna hold the infant, head in one, in, in one hand, feet in the other. You definitely don't want to have the a vertical infant. You're not going to get a lot of lift here. You got to have it side by side holding like a hot dog and then punt the infant. That could be your YouTube channel, bro. I don't know you. <laughs> it's an extreme example, but that's why I don't give shout outs to people I don't know. You could do the most out of pocket stuff, bro. Oh, the catch by Dune. Yo, what's up, Dito? Dito saying hi from Brazil. What's up, dude? Shout out to Brazil. See, I will give shout outs to individual countries if people are saying hi from them. Because people have pride in where they're from, and that's dope. I, yeah, I uh, I had timed him out, Sagittarius, so they won't be saying that again. Hot dog baby holding the strat on lock. <laughs> oh, that's awesome, kids. <laughs> Yo, game one goes to Dune. I keep going too far, man. This a new 10 second skip technology is a too much for me. Yo, what's up, Chesco? I appreciate that, homie. Welcome in, welcome in. We're in grand finals here. Good lead for Dune, but I mean, if you land a dig, this is very flippable. Here, all the way from Australia. Yo, that's awesome. <laughs> Son of Dips a shout out North Korea. Bro, they don't have... They don't have connection to the greater internet, bro. Their government doesn't allow that. So that's how I know you're capping. And, and, and you're not watching from there. All right, Skarm it a Skarm. From Canada, what's up? Hello, hello. Yeah, I'll uh, just go back to the way that I was doing it, so that way it is just the five seconds. Oh my goodness, Ken. That'll be an early morning. Dang. Uh, uh, you're from uh, uh, Punxsutawney? Nice. Yo, didn't that Groundhog dude not see his shadow? So it is supposed to be like... An early spring or something? If he's wrong, what are his consequences, chat? Has anyone looked into this? If the groundhog is wrong, are there consequences? <laughs> oh, he's going for an undercharged brave bird. It still knocks out. In comes the dugong. This dugong is, is going to be a bit difficult. King Crispy from Virginia. Johnny from Duval. Let's go. He gets grounded if he's wrong. <laughs> oh. If he's wrong, he gets punted on Abhishek's channel. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> no, bro. The collector has me. Oh, my God. I I I'm deceased, bro. <laughs> Oh, I'm just 
deceased. <laughs> oh man. Resetting a debuff here would be nice for Dune. Like he wants to save energy and then reset the debuff basically. Oh, he calls that it. it's not the drill run. The no shield here. The icy, that's not gonna KO. He sends it in, in comes the Gligar. Immediately met with the slam. Only makes the body slam here, but a slam plus two mud bombs is easily enough to KO because this is a shadow cache. And he can throw the icy wind, but it's not going to matter. Two mud bombs KO anyway. I like that, that we have definitely covered a wide gauntlet of topics on this stream. <laughs> from high level Pokemon plays, having three top cut people show up to just talking about uh, consequences for groundhogs if they get predictions wrong. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Dune is one win away, dude, from his second regional win in two months. Can anyone stop this man, chat? I couldn't stay in an interview. I was planning on cutting a WWE style promo on how Scarberry is mid. Let's go. All right, Shadow Gligar into Shadow Cash. Yeah. Going for the skull. I mean, it's just a skull. Oh, he lets it go. He lets it go. He lets it go. Like, look at that damage, bro. That damage is so stupid. And he wins charge attack priority. <laughs> and then you can see they're chatting about it there. He was not prepared to lose charge attack priority there. But that shows us that, uh, that Dune has a very high attack weight, Shadow Cash. Bro. Simul switch Annihilate into Wiz Cash. And this is looking like a Dune 3 0. Yeah, he has lost one game so far. He was 12-0-1, so he's 15, he's 17-1-1. He's 17-1-1 in this tournament. 17 wins, one loss, one tie. The Groundhog only gets 390%. Hold on. The Groundhog's only hitting 390 right now? 39% accuracy? Nah, bruh, he gotta go. He gotta go. It is. It is time to retire the Groundhog. And he doesn't get the debuff. This Shadow Ball just easy KOs. It'd be funny, FJ, but I don't even think he needs the boost here. He sends in the charge of bug. Yo, do you just catch on the cash here on three? Oh, he tried for it. He tried for it. Mason didn't let him have it. Mason didn't let him have it. And then you just Night Slash just to get the damage. Mason didn't let him have the BM catch. Mason didn't let him have the BM catch. Dude, so oh, he gets the boost. <laughs> he gets the boost. No way. No way. <laughs> Oh no! FJ totally called it. And Mason just sets the phone down. There's nothing more to do. He's going for the bad manners power whip as well. Oh my goodness. Dude Bug 97 is your Knoxville regional champion. An 18 1 and 1 record. Just an unbelievable dominant turn tournament run. My goodness. He won San Antonio. He was a judge at Portland. Made day two at Charlotte with the San Antonio team. Switches the team up. Updates it. Runs Annihilate. 
and he's regional champion, bro. Again. Here we go. Our winners here. Dune rocking the Annihilate Night Slash variant. Charger, Shadow Cash, Skarmory, Lickitung, Shadow Gligar. Magic Mason, Shadow Gligar, Whizcash, Dugong, Lickitung, Skarmory, Charger Bug, Rock Haven, Shadow Gligar. See, Shadow Gligar on all three. It It is so good, man. <laughs> Annihilate, Whizcash, Shadow, Licky, Umbreon, and Skarmory. So we see three Skarms, three Lickies. Three um, Shadow Gligars, two Shadow Whizcashes, one Shadow Whizcash, two Charger Bugs, an Umbreon, and then an Annihilate, an Annihilate, and then a Dugong. Yo, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull a PV poke along here. All right, team builder for for a show six. So live battles, I will be on my next stream. While we're here, uh, let's take a look at what I can run for this cup. The goal is we're gonna let night slash ape do night slash ape behavior. All right, if I do this, everything else on my team has to just demolish. Um. Has to just demolish Charge a Bug, bro. I don't. I could do like Ash here. I might. I I love the Shadow, but I might need the bulk of the non-Shadow. Shadow Gligar, Cress, Umbreon, Shadow Wiz, Ape Dugong. Ooh. What if, hypothetically, I'm a bozo and I really wanted to run Zapdos? <laughs> hypothetically. Hypothetically. What if I was an idiot like like your good friend Mr. 7-7 and I wanted to run Zapdos at this cup? I need Gligar then? Yeah. And then for for my final two, I need I need stuff that beats opposing Dugong. I need stuff that beats opposing Dugong, basically. Licky's a really solid option there. I know, I know how to use Licky well. I need stuff that Dugong I can't just two shield through. Ooh, Cress. Cress. Hold on. Let me duplicate this tab. I want to figure out what is. I I'm duplicating the the tab real quick. I want stuff that beats Dugong and beats Charger Bug. What beats Dugong and Charger Bug? Yo, it's a Bruckus. Reggie? I don't want to run Reggie. Ah, yes! The cure to my woes, chat! Mill tank! Uh. I don't want to run Basti, bro. Like, if I have Gligar to help with Charger, then I'm really, really soft to Cash. Eh! I can play around Cash. I can play around cash. No, let's go to advanced. Let's go 40. Let's get weird with it. Let's get weird with it. Bro, why is it telling me to run bronze on? Decidui? Yo, Dunsparce? Ooh. Yo, Steelix, hello? 
Do I unretire Steelix? That seems like a bad idea, right? Unretiring Steelix? That I'm 3x weak to counter. I don't really want that. I definitely need bulk no matter what. Like, I'm definitely on the glassy side of things. It really said, uh, this motherfucker gets clapped by Carbink. Bro, no one runs that. Also, fuck, I don't have a licky counter. Oh, Jesus. Do I just run Umbreon, bro? Turn of Skarmory, no. I hate Skarmory, bro. I don't like it. Need some real oh, do I do SERP? Bro, I know this one guy at my who's gonna be there is gonna run Skarmory though. He's gonna run Skarmory, bro. He's a hundred percent gonna run Skarmory. Because I don't really think Umbreon is doing too well in a Dugong Charger. I, I think I'm looking for a bit more bulk than, than Vigo. Yeah, Rusty. Uh, it was just because they were so good in the beginning when I started out. Dilly has bulk, but I worry that like down energy there it's still not going to be comfortable here. I feel like if I bring something like Carbink though, I'm just gonna never actually bring it. And I'd want to bring a Pokemon that I can actually use. I still feel really soft into Charger. Do I just go cash here? I think I just go cash here. And just say, if I see an Annihilate, uh, yeah, I think the solution is just normal cash. Because normal cash, I add bulk to the team. I do... Ish? Or do I do Shadow? Alright, uh, people who do regionals and are smart. Uh, do we think I need Shadow cash? Like, Shadow Cash is way more comfortable into something like an Azu, which is nice, but it leaves me glassier. It leaves me glassier. That's, yeah, I I guess I just do the Shadow Cash. I guess I guess I, guess I just do the Shadow Cash. Yo, I can pull up what I ran for my last cup, apparently. Yo, did I run this for my last cup? I can't remember. I must have. Either that, no, I think I was scrimming with someone. I think I was scrimming with someone because I definitely prefer the Shadow Cash, but I'm worried about the bulk on the team. I guess I'll be okay. I'll just, um, charge a bugs a Copium Mon. I'll survive. I will do what a Mountain Dugong did and just say that charge bug isn't real and it cannot hurt me. But apparently this is what I ran last time. So we're going to get rid of a lot of these mons. Uh, the only thing we're keeping is is the Shadow Gligar. I'm weak to Licky. I am weak to Licky, aren't I? Oh. Do I have to not run Zapdos? I'm going to be sad if I, don't, if, if I can't run Zapdos. But I'm really weak to Licky, aren't I? <laughs> Oh, I already have Gligar in there, bro. Annihilate by bees, uh, a rank 17. 4, 12, 14. I 
I mean, I have my own Licky to kind of neutralize that damage, but... And Shadow Cash is... I did leave out Dirge, but I'm already pretty weak to Licky. Mm. <laughs> I'm a bit soft to Licky, but like Annihilate, Licky, Shadow Gligar, and Cash can all play around it. So... I think this is just what I'll go with. I'm having some fun with it. I'm having some fun with it. So... I think we'll just do that. Like, the Licky is awkward, but I feel like I can play around it. I'm, I'm already bringing the Giga Chad Zapdos. I'm already bringing the Giga Chad Zapdos. I mean... It's my local. I don't think a lot of them have level 50 Lickies. So, in that regard, I should be, I should be pretty safe. Yo, it's past midnight chat. Oh my goodness. All right. Uh, I should probably go to bed. So, I appreciate y'all for hanging out. Three hours, 40 minutes. Not bad. Dunebug is just too good at this game. But yeah, I appreciate y'all. Thank you for hanging out. All right, I appreciate y'all, and I will hopefully be back. The Tuesday stream, I mean, the cup is on Tuesday, so it might be delayed slash postponed, but I will keep y'all posted if I actually end up going to that. All right, peace.